All right, y'all, we give praise, esteem, and honor to the living Elohim in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach this day. Let's go to John chapter 5, verse 39. Hey, be quiet and stop playing before I give you something to play with. And it's going to be left and right upside your head. That what you want? That what you want? Let me get to you now. That what you want? Yeah, that what you want. That what you want. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allah in you. I come out of his name. You receive me not of another shall come in his own name. Him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and not the honor that comes from Allah only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Abba. There's one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Had you believed Moses, you would have believed me for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my words? Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 25. Revelation chapter 11, verse 9. I need you to be quiet, Joseph. Can you do that? You can't. So if you can't be quiet, that means that you're going to have to be chastised. Would you prefer chastisement or quiet? You don't know? Hmm. <laughs> Matthew 5 and 17, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For truly I say unto you, to Shah Mahim and the rats pass one jot of one tittle, shall it know why pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach uh, men so, he shall be called least in the mouth of Shah Mahim. Whosoever shall do and teach the same shall be called great in the mouth of Shah Mahim. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the mouth of Shah Mahim. Hey, I ain't trying to be funny. Hey, stand. Don't that nigga walk in here looking like James? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm talking about, hey, when he walked in, though, y'all don't know James. Boy, he walked in, though. With, with the shades, that's what it is. They talking about, boy, he walked in here looking just like James. <laughs> Hey, Genesis chapter two. Shalom, Shaul. Shalom, brother Craig. Oh man, that, that definitely how he be coming through with them shades on. <laughs> I'm talking about and the peasy beard to go with it. There it is. Y'all the same, y'all the same thing, man. <laughs> That's all he ever say. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> They said they ain't related to you. <laughs> These, the generations of Shamahina were rats when they were created. In the day that Yahuwah Alahim made the uh, rats in Shamahim. So check us out, right? This is what we probably going to end up doing. We probably going to wrap up with this one here because we have video nine in regard to this particular verse. Uh, and focus on God. We look winded. Because I heard you got something growing inside of you. Yeah, that's why I asked that. Uh, Shalom, Brother Ellis and Saran. So we might end up isolating on and splitting off to isolate on two different things. But we still ain't got to the stuff with the tree of life yet. That we should have integrated into this. So we might splice off to go do that. And then just dealing with refuge. Because we started talking about the city of refuge. What refuge is. And other areas outside the city of refuge. So with that being said. When we looked at Genesis 2 and 4. Y'all remember what that mean right? What it mean Doris? You should have known you were going to get ash. Your grades are blow. You might not make it out of this semester. Mm. That's and that's the sad part. This your study part. He ain't even helping you. Who? Who? They said who? Mm. Damn. That's what I should have said. Who? I should have hit you with the Kevin Hart. Damn. He gonna let you fail, Doris. All jokes aside, do you remember what this means? What this is about? The overview. What we've been talking about for the last three weeks. There you go. So there you go. So when we're looking at these generations, right, is that he's talking about this is the account of the family in heaven. 
So we've been looking at a lot of things that pertains. What we've been actually looking at is how one actually becomes into that generation, whether if y'all were paying attention, to be a part of that generation. You know what I'm talking about? See, the generations was already written. So when you when you go outside, Monica, you remember what you're seeing, what you're looking at at nighttime, right? What you're looking at at nighttime? She don't know. Your husband help you out. Help your help your wife out. Mm. What you're looking at is a detailed generation of everyone who was born or the work. What we've been doing is how you actually became a part of that generation with your heart being circumcised, with going in the city of refuge, all those things that pertain to that, that's how you actually become a part of that generation. See, what you're seeing is when you see the stars in heaven, as, as it's written in Genesis 2, you see the completion. You know what I'm talking Remember, he tell you the beginning at the end and the end from the beginning. So when you've seen him making that creation, that's the end. Do you recall what we looked at to prove that? With those stars. Do you recall? See, now I gotta make sure you're retaining your information. Yes, Doris. Uh -huh. No. But I appreciate your attempt. Oh, you raising your hand, Gloria? Oh, you did raise your hand. You keep on, you're going to be in summer school with your friend. See, you weren't paying. Fail. 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 Tired of this job. Boo, do you remember what verse we looked at with these stars? Oh, fail. No. It was actually. No, all jokes aside, what we were looking at, what did he tell Abraham as it pertained to his offspring? He did say that, and then you have the other. There'd be You would not be able to number them for the stars in heaven. The standard of the sea is accurate, too, because he did say both. But we were focusing on the one with the stars. Say it's a multitude, you can't count it. That's where Revelation come in at, because you see him in Revelation 7. It's a multitude, can't number. You know what I'm saying? These are all his offspring. These are all the people that would be born. Because this son, Boop had told me this a long time ago, because what it was is, you remember you were younger and you always would see stars in the sky, but now when you go outside at night, you don't seem to see nothing. You know what I'm talking about? She told me that's from all the uh, pollution in the atmosphere that block it out. Because you know, them people ain't have street lights like we have, but they had enough stars at nighttime where they could, they could get some type of light where they could see. You know what I'm talking about? Do you recall what verse that is in the epistle letter that referred to that? That you shine as lights in the world amongst a crooked and perverse nation. You know what I'm talking about? That you could be light in the midst of darkness, that even in darkness, people can see a proper way to go. You know what I'm talking about? That's the purpose of being born again, if you would. So with that being said, I mentioned Jeremiah chapter 9. Let's take a look. Hey, boy, I said be quiet. You ain't even talking to nobody. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? You talking to yourself? Come here, Joseph. Come on, Joseph. Come on. Come on, Joseph. Come on, Joseph. Let them lines go for your breaking line. You don't want what? Huh? You don't want what? Ain't, ain't nobody doing nothing to you. You gonna be quiet, huh? All right. Let's pick it up at twenty-five. I did say twenty-five, didn't I? Thus say, if you who will let not the wise esteem in his wisdom, neither let the mighty esteem in his might. Let not the rich esteem in his riches, but let him esteem him that esteem esteem in this that he understand and know me. That I, Yahuwah, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these I delight, saith Yahuwah. Now, remember, we were talking about, did I mention this on camera last night? I did at the end, didn't I? About the mercy seat, did I mention that? Mm. Okay, I'm going to make sure I ain't tripping. Now, with that being said, these are the things that he delight in. Of course, this all sprang from the conversation. God bless Brother Langford. Uh, 
That's some people get offended by when it's mentioned. And you know what that is? That there's no mercy in the law whatsoever. You know what I'm talking about? You can't find it. You won't find it. You can even see that in example of what we talked about last night. Shemai. You remember Shemai from last night? You remember that? You don't remember that. What, what about him, Tibbet? Yeah, uh, blasphemy. You don't remember. He cursed David. Why he cursed David, Sibbit? You don't know why he cursed him? I can't recall. Mm. What about you, sir? You know why he cursed him? You know why he cursed him? Mm. You know why he cursed him? Don't. It was because of Saul. You know what I'm saying? That's why he cursed him. He said, you a bloody man. And in Shemai's mind, he was the reason why Saul died, though David had nothing to do with the matter. You know what I'm talking about? And because he became king, he said, you a bloody man. All the blood of the house of Saul coming back to you. But what Shemai had did, it was spoke a word against his own soul. But you know what David did? He showed mercy. The law didn't allow for that. See, that's the stuff you're supposed to pay attention to. The law said Shemai's supposed to what? Die. You know what I'm talking about? And of course, you see, what did the father do later? He gave judgment to the son. But did he even tell him to kill him right then? He said, do what you feel is right. But make sure he go to the, he makes sure his gray headed behind go to the grave with blood. You know what I'm talking about? And of course, he got his judgment. And you know what that is? He forgive transgression and iniquity, but by no means clears the guilty. And then he even gave him a spot to hang himself. And that's what he did. Stanks. I can see you. I'm only mentioning that because that was the framework of how we even got to these generations. That going to read the first John three and one for me, Sid, please. Little Ruth. Behold, what manner of love the what father manner has, of what of love? What manner of what love? Why the ahead. father hath bestowed upon us? What else? that we should be called sons of Allah? Now, Paul, see, this is the thing where you sit back and look at where the mercy come in at because you not old to become a son of Allah. That's not something that you would had to do. See, a lot of us think that this is something that he owed you. See, that's mercy and kindness to allow you to be a part of his framework. Go ahead and give me Job one quick, man. I think it's 38. Give me verse 5 and tell me what it says. Renee. Job 1 and 5. 38 and 5. Renee. Hey. Who have laid the measures thereof? Who what? Laid the measures thereof. Give me verse three then. Gird up now your loins like a man. Gird your loins up like a what? Like a man. Like a what? Man. Mm. For I will demand of you and answer you me. Answer me. Where was you when I laid the foundation? Where of the earth? were you when he did what? Laid the foundations of the earth. Laid the what? Foundations of the earth. Now look up foundation and tell him what it says. Like. To found, to fix, establish. Establish. Lay foundation. Lay the foundation. What did it say about Mashiach? When was he slain? From the foundation. The From the foundation. That means before the world was made. So that means the mercy and love of Elohim was established before the world was made, which is showing you that the new covenant was going to exceed in esteem of the old before the old was ever instituted. You understand what I'm telling you? That means the mercy of Allah was established before the instructions were established. Which is why they should have took from the tree of life versus from the tree of knowledge of good and evil when they were in the garden. Because then they would have been able to partake in everlasting life. See, the everlasting life, the gift was off top. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean the law is lesser? Absolutely not. It just means that something was greater was said. Because, give me John 1 and 12 Hold, he's still holding First John 3, and we still holding Job 38. We're going to get to uh, Revelation 11 because I, I want to go ahead and get you gentlemen's answers out, out of the way quickly, with haste. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of Elohim. As many as what? As received him. He gave him what? Power to become Paul. sons of Elohim. Now, where does your power come from? Your power going to come from Elohim. And you have Trust in Yahuwah for trusting Yahuwah's everlasting strength because the word for power usually is going to be co-op. 
You know what I'm talking about? And then you, you and then you got the joy of Yahuwah is your strength. Well, why would you be joying in Yahuwah? See, I told you a long time ago, it's better to have joy than to have happiness because joy lasts long. You know what I'm saying? Happiness come and go. Remember, joy is a product of what? That's one of the products of the spirit, which is a product of the seed. See, the word don't say it bring happiness. It say it bring joy. You know what I'm saying? And he said that the joy of Yahuwah is your what? Is your strength. So your power is going to come from your joy and your trust in Yahuwah. And he gave you that power. See, why would you have joy in Yahuwah based off the witness of Amashia? This is why. We talked about it basically Wednesday. What did that verse Deuteronomy 19 say? He told you what? If a person has slayed his neighbor ignorantly, right? And ignorant means that you slayed a neighbor who you did not, you did not know and you did not have any hate in your heart. Every last person in here has slayed this man, but you did it ignorantly though. So that means you had an opportunity to go into this place of refuge so that the slayer won't catch you. Because remember what the text say. Because a sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. It is privily in the hearts of the sons of men to do evil. Meaning, if you commit a sin worthy of death, you were supposed to die right then. You know what I'm saying? That's what people don't understand. You're supposed to die right then. And because you don't die right then, guess what your mind tell you? I can do it again and again and again and again. You know what I'm talking about? So when you take in and you bring in the good news, because remember, what does Isaiah 52 and 7 say? Your Elohim does what? Reign. What does that mean? Your Elohim is king because it's say Malik. So that means he has dominion and rule. What did he take dominion and rule over? He took dominion and rule over sin, meaning he took back the power over death that the epistle letter said the devil had. You know what I'm talking about? So now I come to you and I tell you, this is why I told Well, y'all already know this. You know what I'm saying? And if somebody on Clubhouse or on the screen see it later, this so you can know this here. I done preached in the street many a day. I've been preaching the word for a decade, and I ain't never led to no law to nobody. When you came around here, did I tell you about some law off the top? Tell you about all this stuff you're doing wrong? Not nail time. For what? You already knew you were doing wrong when you heard the word. For whatever we were talking about. I ain't have to isolate no law. But what you heard was, so you mean to tell me? That I done did all this evil, and there's an opportunity that I can be absolved of all that evil if I just receive this man right here. That brings joy to your heart because you go to thinking, I should, you go to thinking about all the stuff you did where you should have died. Then you go to thinking about his mercy. His mercy is going to bring joy to your heart because you don't have to die. And all I got to do is live for him now. See, if I come tell you, you know you ain't got no business eating no swine, you looking at me like, nigga, what? You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're breaking that Sabbath. What? You just condemned the person. See, you ain't really realized that's what you've done. You just condemned the person. That wasn't your intent, though. I'm not saying that that's what brother's intent is. They're just doing what others told them to do. You tell, you tell them the law. You expose they sin, but you ain't exposing that they're unmerciful. You ain't exposing that they got bad judgment. You ain't exposing that they ain't got no faith. You ain't exposing that they got malicious intent in their heart. You ain't exposing none of that. You focusing on what's easy. You know how easy it is to stop eating pork. It's not that difficult. You know how easy it is to, to keep a Sabbath? It's not, that's not that difficult. None of them laws is difficult to do till you start talking about the issues that come out the heart. That's when it becomes to get difficult. And that's what don't nobody want to talk about because most people's heart is filthy. You know what I'm talking about? And I'd rather talk about the easy stuff. Because that way I ain't got to focus on the lewdness, the murder, the evil eyes, the blasphemy. I ain't got to deal with none of that. See, that's why the new thing is veganism. See, you get, remember I told him, my man was just talking about that. He just said that. The Lord ain't eating no meat, so I ain't eating none. That ain't going to do nothing for your heart. That ain't going to do absolutely. I told my homegirl this about five years ago. She tried to use Daniel. See, but y'all already know what that was about. We kind of touched it last night, then we moved on. You know what I'm talking about? I say, baby, you can eat all the vegetables you want and still bust hell wide open. Because what her husband was telling her at the time is they, they were vegetarians in the garden and they still disobeyed. So what that mean? You know what I'm talking about? What does that mean? You can eat all the vegetables you want and if your heart's sour, it ain't going to do nothing for it. And you can eat all the meat you want. And if your heart's sour, it ain't going to do nothing about it because it ain't about what you eating. It's about what you got going on on the inside. 
But see, it's easier to focus on that than to develop your character. I'm only mentioning it to you so when you go out in the world, you would understand who's full of crap and who ain't. Because people who solid going to focus on your character. See, you don't become righteous from the, from the outside in. You become righteous from the inside out. And it's easier to focus on the outside than it is the inside. Because when you look on the inside, you go to seeing things that you don't want nobody to know about. That's part of the reason why you have to confess your sins when you get immersed. Not for other people so that you can understand what it is that you have been doing so you would be ashamed of yourself. And that you wouldn't do it no more. But, you know, we get caught up on you embarrassed if other people don't hear what you've done. Ain't, nothing, ain't a sin on this earth that you committed that somebody else on this earth hasn't. You know what I'm talking about? If it's anything you can think of that you done done, it's somebody living who done done it too. So you're not in an exclusive club. You committed idolatry, it's somebody did it too. If somebody was a blessed, it's somebody who did it too. If somebody was a whoremonger, it's somebody out here who did it too. You ain't by yourself. It's only one person who done sinned the sin that none of y'all can emulate. You know who that is? No, that's Adam. It's going to somebody going to do what Judas did. It's going to somebody going to turn on, on the saints. That's all Judas did was just snitch on the saint. You know what I'm talking about? It's plenty of people going to do that. But actually getting a direct instruction from Elohim himself and doing the opposite. Oh, he the only one did that. You'll never replicate that. You know what I'm talking about? You'll never replicate that. And even with him doing that, guess what he gave him? Gave him some mercy. How he gave him the mercy? Uh, James, Johnny. I said what I said. I said, how did he give him some mercy? Yeah, swiftly with haste. Mm. What kind of coach was that? Mm. Gave him a linen tunic. No, he gave him coats of skin. Because remember, he, that's right, he made a sock. He gave him a linen garment. Because when you look at it in the language, that coats of skin translate to a linen tunic. So basically, he gave him a cover, or he gave him the righteousness of the saints, because you saw they covered themselves with fig leaves. So that's what that Isaiah. See, I'm mentioning this stuff because this stuff we done went over over the course. So I'm trying to make sure they remember. And, and Isaiah 30, when he say, you cover with a covering, but not with my covering. Because remember, they cover themselves with what? Fig leaves. They sought to cover themselves. And not to cover themselves like people say cover. But he said, I'll give you a covering to cover that sin. Take these linen garments. And that's why he said, keep your garments white. Because that's what he gave them. You know what I'm saying? As a foreshadow when that Saran point, pointed out. Come on back to Jeremiah 9, 25. Behold, the days come, saith you, that I will punish all, circumcised with the uncircumcised. That's right. Egypt and Yehuda, Edom and the sons of Ammon and Moab, and all in the uttermost part, uttermost corners, excuse me, that dwell in the wilderness, for all nations uncircumcised, and all the house of Yasharal uncircumcised in the heart. Notice what he said. He killing everybody. Because he said they uncircumcised in the flesh. He said, but you uncircumcised in the heart. Now, why did I mention all of that? Revelation 11 and 9. Now I'm going to see if you've been on top of your game. It's 8, but it's okay. I pick it up at verse 1 for complete context for everybody. Big stuff and where your mom at? You're supposed to say she in her skin. <laughs> you hang around your granddaddy. I know he done said it. Hmm? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I had your papa I'll tell you about it later. 
He does. He has quite a few idioms that clearly you ain't caught on to. But we're going to have him teach it to you. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You look confused. You confused? Revelation 11 and 1. There was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the battle king stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Elohim and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court that is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it's given unto the Gentiles in the Kadash city, they shall tread underfoot 42 months. I will give unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the Arats. If any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut Shamahim that it rained not in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the waters to turn them to blood. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascend out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Who is this beast here, sir? Civic, who is this beast? You say it's Satan? How much money you'll put on that? Won't put no money on it. You won't put no money on it? I'm glad you wouldn't because you would have lost it. Who knows who this beast is? Don't nobody know who this beast is? This is highly unfortunate. Huh? Well, that's that's what you want to call it. What you say? No, it's the it's the it's the actual beast, or what people would call the anti mashiach or the last ruler. Let's tell them over here is Daniel seven because everybody looked like they know we we were talking about seven uh twenty one is fine, seven twenty even better. And of the ten horns that were in his head, of the other which came up, before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. I beheld the same horn, made war with the faithful, and prevailed against them. Remember also when we were reading about them stars, remember what it said in, in Revelation 7 about them stars? He said how he said they had these are those that overcame by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame by the word of his testimony. He said, these are those that came out of great tribulation. See, there's going to be great. See, I keep telling y'all this here, right? It's a lot of dudes, man. They be false flagging. What do I mean by that? They got you looking for stuff that's not going to happen. And then every time something happened, oh, this, see, prophecy being fulfilled, that nigga's a jackass. Because he going to have you set up for when stuff really go down, but you're not going to be spiritually prepared, and you're going to fold. You know what I'm talking about? And the reason why that happened is they make everything central around what goes on in America. What goes on in America has no bearing on the word of you whatsoever. You know what I'm talking about? No bearing at all. America is not that important. I know I tell you that regularly. I have to reinforce that point. What make you think America is that important? Because we over here, well, you got people who's, your people everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Where most of us going to be at. By hook or crook, however means that he gets you over there. But see, that's neither here nor there. What you ain't supposed to be looking for, what happened in America, you're supposed to be looking for what fulfilled a book. And you can't make everything that happened in the world try to fulfill the book. That's why people don't believe the book. Because it's not the book that they have a problem with. It's the dummies who talking about it who don't know what they're talking about. Because this man, I done told you this plenty of times, they're not going to come kill you because you're black. It said that he going to prevail against who? The saints. So that means that a time will come where there will be a war against people who keep the word. See, that's not going on in the earth. Ain't nobody looking at you talking about, oh, you one of them Jesus people. Let's lock them up. Ain't nobody doing that to you. Ain't nobody thinking about you. You know how you know this here? Because you got punks punking. Dykes dyking, you know what I'm talking about? Whores whoring, male or female, molesters molesting, junkies junkying, liars lying. Idolaters idolater. That's what you got going on through the whole earth, not just here. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't nobody concerned with you. 
Ain't nobody looking at you like you better stop talking about that Bible. What do these people actually do? They ridicule you and they mock you because they believe you believe in fairy tales. Actually, the general populace believes that you are a modicum less than intelligent because they believe you believe in a fairy tale book. You know what I'm talking about? So they don't even take you seriously. Then when you take our people who say, oh, we the people of the book, they don't want us to know this. They don't care. See, you think you be, see, you know how most of us believe if we start messing with their money, then people will get upset. They don't care about that. If what you talking about start infringing on their sin, that's when they going to care. You know what I'm talking about? What does the text say when he dropped them plagues in Revelation that these people not going to repent from? Sorceries, idolatries, murders, this is what they're going to be upset about. Now, we done discussed this before. We're not. Shalom, Brother Reynolds. We're not going to spend an inordinate amount of time on it. But we, I am going to ask you a question to make sure you remember this here because it's been a few months. When this man pop up on the earth, right, he going to say he God and you going to say he not. And that's going to cause a conflict because all the world going to be following him. See, like I say, you see, people don't want stuff to be black and white. But I done been done told you, you're going to have to pick a side. And once you pick a side, you're going to have to stay over there. And you ain't no need of you being lukewarm and straddling the fence. If you're going to ride with the lamb, then ride with the lamb. If you're going to ride with the beast, then ride with the beast. It, just get a full reward now. Don't be halfway in and go to hell. You know what I'm talking about? Be all the way in and go to hell. That means live your life, do what you want. Make sure you enjoy yourself or you get punished. You know what I'm talking about? But if you're going to ride with the lamb, then go all the way out so you can get a full reward and dwell in righteousness and peace. Don't halfway do it because he ain't going to look at you. Well, you did some good stuff some of the time. The Lord going to send you to hell and he don't have no problem with it. Because I gave you ample opportunity. Every day this man leave you alive and you contrary to him, that's an example of his long suffering. Now, how that long suffering hits you depends on how you behave. It can be long suffering for you to come to repentance and be saved, or it can be long suffering so he can destroy you. But that rests with you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you, you ain't hurt my feelings if you don't show up and do this here. If you were straddling the fence, go to hell doing what you want. I recommend it. You know what I'm talking about? Don't be like, I'm a, I want to be righteous and do this here, but I'm going to send a little bit here and send a little bit there. You're not going to get no full reward. So you might as well live your life and do what you want and enjoy yourself. Because if you're going to serve the man, serve the man. You know what I'm saying? So you can get a full reward. Ain't no halfways. Ain't no second. You know what they be doing with them school now? Giving participation trophies and certificates. That sets up, especially for a young man. It don't matter for a little girl. For a young man, you set him up to be a perpetual loser. To be comfortable with accepting mediocrity. A man should never be taught that. A man shouldn't even be put in his mind that it's okay if you don't win. It ain't about the winning. It's about him striving for excellence. You don't raise no young man to be satisfied with just participating. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely not. And every man in here can tell you that. That's not how you raise no boy. Oh, son, you participated. You you did a great job. He sucks at what he did, but he give him, you give him, no, son, you're not good enough. We need to go back in the lab and train a little bit more so you can be better next time. And even if it ain't nothing but an incremental big piece of improvement, then you let him know, son, you improved from the last time. And now we're going to work some more so you can improve some more. Not just try to stroke his ego, because when he get grown, he going to suck. And then he going to be the same man that people complain about in these days and time that he can't do nothing as a man. You know what I'm talking about? You don't wait till he get 21 to try to get him right. You supposed to be training him when he, soon as he come out the womb. You know what I'm talking about? As soon as he born, he supposed to be getting prepared. Because one day he going to be what? Somebody's father, somebody's husband, somebody's brother, and possibly somebody's leader. But you care about his feelings. Feelings don't mean nothing to no man. Not that his feelings don't matter. He can't get caught up with him. He got to lead one day. And if he always in his feelings, he can't lead. Because every man here can tell you, don't no man in here want to be, be subordinate to a man who's always in his feelings. Who's always emotional. That means when war go down, when tough times go down, I can't rely on him. You know what I'm saying? Now, ain't none of us been in no military, but if you can talk to people who've been in the military, they know that when I look to the left and I look to the right, I need to know that I can rely on the man next to me because my life depends on me. You know what I'm talking about? It's different with women. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all social hierarchy and camaraderie is different. You're not looking at your sister and be like, my life depends on her. When men go out and do something, he know my life depends on the strength of this man. 
the weaker he is, that put the whole group at risk. And I'd rather not go out. The, I'd rather go to war with two strong men than to go out to war with two strong men and 10 weak ones. Lead the 10 weak ones to the house. I'll take my chances with these two right here. If we don't come back, we don't come back. You know what I'm talking about? See, women don't think like that. Why would you do that? I don't want them whole niggas with me. Y'all ever, you ever seen this situation before? You ever been like it'd be about 10, 15 niggas try to jump you? It's just you and one other person. You ever been told what to do? Monte, no. Then, then what you do? When you see that there, you know you can't get away. You go find a nigga, you punch him dead in his mouth. If you're strong enough, you'll drop him. Six of them niggas gonna run. You know what I'm talking about? About a good handful of them because they soft, they cows, they strength come from the group. Not from them individuals. You know what I'm talking about? Now, if it's a situation where you got 15 psychopaths, ain't nothing you can do about that. You know what I'm saying? I would advise you to run. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, no, I, we've been in this situation before. When you got a group of dudes, it's only really, say if you, let's just bring it down, say it's 10 dudes. It's only really two, three that got some heart. The rest of them, they don't want no problems. So, you know what I'm saying? So, if it's like three of y'all, if you focus on, man, each one of y'all fire off, and if you can fire off and drop, well, a couple of them going, because they only came because they knew they had, the, they had the numbers. You know what I'm saying? And once you drop a couple of them, shoot, huh? Ain't nothing wrong with that either. You know, whatever works. <laughs> he ain't told you nothing wrong. Because guess what happened? When one of them see that, that this man ear gone and blood coming out, he going to panic. You got to. Because you're going to get beat anyway. They got the numbers. But you got to, you got to go ahead and put the fear in because most dudes are cowards. Most dudes out here are posturing they cowards. They don't really want confrontation. They strength come from being in the group. Don't think that the group don't know. That nigga, that's all. He saw. He saw. The group already know this. That's why when you get in a situation like that, oh, man, they finna jump us, and you looking at who you got with you. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's no different than the word, because we didn't talk about this before. You know, I'm supposed to symbolize what? A strong defense. You don't want a weaker man next to you. Because when it came down when they went to spot the land, what did he tell them? Man, leave them weak dudes behind. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring them in here. Because what are they going to do? They're going to discourage the group. And it would be better for just leave them behind. You know that from the uh, story with Gideon. If they go down to the water and do what? Put they, they get down on their knees and put they lead them to the house. You know what I'm saying? Them boys there is not ready for battle. Lead them to the house. I'll take these. Because we'll look, of course, you who are the one doing the fight, but I'd rather have a chance with these 300 men of valor than these thousand men of weakness. And you have to look at that when it comes to faith. That's why, what did he tell Peter? When you're converted, what he told him to do? Strengthen your brethren because you want to make sure the men around you that they strong. You understand? You was in John 1, right? You still holding that? I'm just making sure. No, nah, we yeah, got yeah, First John 3, yeah. John chapter 1, mm. and, Job. and Job 38. Mm -hmm. Let me run this down. I didn't want to make sure I don't lose that point on the back end. You know what I'm talking about? But, uh, yeah, I'm in Daniel right now. Let me take off. Verse 22, right? Until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and at the time that the saints possessed the Malkuth, or had dominion. See, this is stuff that people don't want to talk about. Like a brother, I know he like to say, man, quarter we go to fasting and this, that, then the third, it'll be over. It ain't. I can tell you right now, you can get a million servants of, of Yahuwah throughout the whole earth to pray and fast at the same time, and you still not going to be delivered to enter into this man's kingdom. Not because that your fasting and praying wouldn't be accepted on high, because the mystery of Elohim has to be fulfilled first. You don't accelerate the process because you want him to accelerate it. The process is going to go how the process is going to go because the process is not about us. The process is about him bringing esteem to his name in the earth. Because remember this here. I need to make sure y'all remember. The beast is representative of what passage in the law? What is the beast representative of in the law? Deuteronomy 13. 
And what is in Deuteronomy 13, Lil Johnny? Can you give me more detail? That's one of them. Can you give me more detail? That's a part of it. Can you give me more detail? I need more detail. Y'all leaving something out. The most important thing. Huh? You can have him out. He seemed to be struggling. I know what I'm saying. If a prophet says something, they do come to pass. He mentioned that, but that ain't y'all leaving something out. Yeah, but you're leaving something out. Y'all know what y'all leaving out? He said, boy, I wouldn't care if they brought fire down from heaven. I wouldn't care if they worked signs and wonders. You better do what I told you to do. That's the part you're leaving out because we're talking about who the beast, what he going to do on the back end. Signs and wonders. He going to bring brown fire from heaven. He going to make an idol be able to talk and be alive. I don't care what he did. You better do what I told you to do. All y'all been told, you raised by black people. Your people done told you. I don't care who came over here and said what? You better keep my door locked. I had nobody in my house. You better not answer my phone. I don't care what nobody said. You better do what I told you to do. How many of y'all got whoopings because you ain't do what your people told you to do because you were listening to somebody else? Huh? You heard that? Some of y'all went to school. You like this here. You better not let them kids touch your stuff. I don't care what they say to you. And you gave it to them anyway. And she gave it to you when you got to the house. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, that's just a living example. All of us done live that. You did? So when you come to dealing with the beast, I don't care what he say. I don't care what he do. Well, you know what your father told you to do. And if you got to go to jail, then jail you go. If you got to die, then death it is. Because remember, you can't kill who's already dead. Remember, he said, thus saith the Ruach, blessed are those that die in the Lord from henceforth. They works do follow them. You got to be willing to understand that if you got to die, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? If you got to go to jail, then so be it. But I don't care what he do. I'm mentioning this here because these are the generations of those in Shamahim and the rats, and every name you've seen written in heaven, they had that mindset, they were willing to do that. You know what I'm talking about? They were willing to do that. They were willing to die. They were willing to go to jail. They were willing to be tortured. They were willing to suffer. Understanding that being counted worthy to suffer for his name is a blessing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers don't want to be blessed. That's why they fight the persecution and disrespect. Most, most dudes ain't even getting disrespected for the word. They get disrespected because they lames in real life. You know what I'm talking about? Truth be told. You ain't nobody persecuting you because you standing on the word. Dudes just don't like you because you a bust. You know what I'm saying? And dudes don't realize that. Y'all know that because y'all been around. Y'all seen a few people here and there. How many dudes you like, they, they persecute, they hating on me. Y'all. Ain't nobody hating on you because you's a square. You know what I'm saying? You do stupid stuff. You lie a lot. You know what I'm talking about? People don't care for you because you're not a good person. Do you know what I'm talking about? But you know, brothers don't want to acknowledge. A lot of brothers ain't good people. When I say good people, I'm talking about, well, you ain't good people. You ain't necessarily even got to be evil or nothing like that. You just ain't good. You ain't solid, man. Nobody can't depend on you. When the pressure get tight, you like this here. You ain't. It's fight or flight. And guess what? You got your Jordans on. You out of here. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't nobody seeing you again. That ain't right. Is it, Doris? You tired? You should have went to sleep. What you call early? What the hell you get up at 4 o'clock for? What's wrong with you? And what did you get up and do? Just look at the walls? I ain't getting up at no four o'clock. Go ahead, roll with it. It sound, it, it go together, don't it? See, she know. 
She was saying that uh, we gonna get them, get them some uh some folk lady dresses. Mm. They had a folk group, Glory and Dory. Mm, she said y'all already got them. Mm. So yeah, y'all been planning this album, huh? No. <laughs> y'all ain't slow, man. Y'all ain't wearing no folk clothing. I'm telling you that right now. Ain't nothing folk about nothing y'all got going on. Seven twenty-three, Daniel. Thus he said, "The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon their rats, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. The ten horns out of this kingdom, ten kings shall arise; another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three things, kings, and he shall speak words." against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and to thank the change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a times a times and a dividing of the time praise you Lord. i've been meaning to mention this y'all it's been a long time since we talked about that you know how people can read this here and they say that's the roman church changed the sabbath right i want to tell you son that person who told you that is an imbecile a jackass a fool an idiot you know what I'm talking about? Completely devoid of all understanding. Read the verse out loud, Civic. Isolate. Pay attention. And he shall speak words against the most So, Paul, this is the first thing you got to understand. This individual who we've already established is who? The beast who's coming out this bottomless pit who's going to persecute these two witnesses. He's going to speak words against the most high. Stanley, where is the other place that bear witness to somebody speaking words against the most high? Where is the other location? Someone speaking words against the Most High that bears witness to this. Where is your second witness? No. James Johnny? Oh, y'all letting me down today. Y'all, somebody better get it right because if not, Dora's losing a toe. And Boop gonna lose a earlobe. Yes. Monica. No. Doris, Boo, Muffin, Callie. Against the Most High. King of Syria. No, not a Joe White King of Syria, but I, 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 I could have lied, but that ain't it. Okay. We spent time on this before, extensive amount of time. We talking about beasts. This should have been easy for you. Come here, Renee. Who? What? Ham? You like sandwich? What'd you say? Esau? That's half of it. Huh? Not a baby. That's a whole person. <laughs> Somebody give me Ezekiel 35, man. Somebody give me Ezekiel 35. Hell, I got this. What? What's your name? Ezekiel 35. Okay. At the top. At the top. It, uh, no, you can start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. Okay. Okay. Ezekiel 35. It is a person. Huh. It is. And I don't see it. That's not a person. Moreover, the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man. Set thy face against Mount Seir. Against who? Mount Seir. Come on. And prophesy against it. That's right. And saying to it, thus says you, Elohim, behold, O Mount Seir, I'm against thee. I'm against you. I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahuwah. That's right. Because thou has a perpetual hatred. Pause. You know what verse this is in Revelation? Chapter 12. Because he became vexed. And when the war with the woman and the remnant of her seed, he was raw. He had a perpetual hatred because they kept the commandments of Elohim and the witness of Yahusha. Mm -hmm. That's what he had a hatred for. You should have known this because what did we talk about Wednesday? What made Satan a murderer? Because he had hate in his heart for his brother. Mm -hmm. Who was his brother? His brother was Adam. Guess what? That's how you know the beast going to come from what household? Mm -hmm. Esau. Because he's going to have a hatred for his brother. Ain't going to be no white gentleman. I've been told you this here. The world ain't following after no white man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just being honest with you. 
That's no disrespect to Caucasians. I'm just telling you, if a man died and resurrected from the dead being Caucasian and the world is 95% brown and black, you think they falling behind that? How they going to follow behind that? And the book say the Gentiles going to come to you and say, truly, our fathers have inherited lies. How are they going to have a perpetual hatred when you already know white folks don't care for you? But they don't care for you because you're black. They don't care for you because you're going to be a threat to their survival. I've been told you that. That's what these people be doing. See, white supremacy is not that they think you better. It's really white survival. They fighting to survive. And people don't, if you look at it from the point of they fighting to survive, it can be easily to counteract what they got going on. They're trying to stay alive. They're the earth's minority. You know what I'm talking about? They know that they can be genetically bred out. You thought they was one that oh they don't want to be they don't want us to be with uh, with they women. Why would they? That's going to lead to their extinction. You know what I'm saying? But you can't look at it that way because you look at it through the realms of emotion. You know what I'm talking about? They hate us, man. They hate anybody who's going to be a threat to their survival. The Egyptians hated you too, and they were black as you because they thought you'd be a threat to their survival. You're going to link up with our enemies and overthrow us. Everything is about survival. Once you get out your feelings and you look, but see, you can't do that if you're a man who got the mind of a woman. You know what I'm talking about? Because when you're a man with the mind of a man, then you're going to look at the moving of nations and armies as men do. This is a tactical, uh, strategic, lateral move that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to increase my wealth. I've been told you this here. Why won't they make us equal? Where in the history of mankind have you seen a superior class make another class equal with them? You know how dumb you got to be? You know what I'm talking about? Because guess what? When you was in the land, the people weren't equal with you. So what makes you think you're going to go in somebody else's land and be equal with them and then cry about why they won't do it? I wouldn't do it. Because guess what happens when you become equal with me? You can destroy me. I don't want you to destroy me. Yes, that would go back to Genesis 3 and 15, uh, Sean, but that's a different conversation. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. We're in Ezekiel 35 and 5. It said, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. Perpetual. And has shed the blood of the children of Yasharal by the force of the sword. By the force. In the time of their calamity. In the time that their iniquity had had an end, had an end. Therefore, as I live, says Jehu Elohim, I will prepare thee unto blood. Under what? Unto blood. Come on. And blood shall pursue it thee. It gonna pursue you. Set thou has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Pop, drop down to verse thirteen. Let's get to the point and get out of here. It says, "Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me." You did what? Boasted against me. Hold on, he did what? Boasted against and me. And he, uh, what else did he do? And you have multiplied your words against me. And what else? And I have heard them. I, he what? I've heard them. He heard them. Well, what did it say over here in Daniel seven twenty five? What did he say? He was who did it just say about Mount Seir was speaking against Yahuwah, right? Now can't we go in Daniel and they say that king, that great king in the latter days, running his mouth against him too in Daniel eleven? But see, get Daniel eleven for him, man. Let's make it easy. make it light on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Get Daniel eleven and thirty for him, uh, there. Eleven and thirty. You know, you got to keep it all natural, see? You keep it all natural. <laughs> mm, that's I, I like little Royce. It says, for the ships of Shittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have the indignation against the Holy Covenant. You have indignation against who? The Holy Covenant. Now, what does the law tell you? Didn't Esau have indignation against the covenant that he made with, uh, with Jacob? He was mad with him about that. He was mad about it. Go look in the law. He was mad about that. Go ahead. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake. I, I only came to say intelligence with who? With them that forsake the holy covenant. Y'all remember what intelligence translates to? To teach. So that means this man is going to come and instruct and teach the people who abandon the covenant of Yahuwah. See, this is what you got to understand. When they talking about abandoning the covenant, he's not talking about abandoning the covenant that's made in the wilderness. That covenant gone. He talking about abandoning the covenant that Yahusha made with his own blood. You know what I'm talking about? That means you abandoning the kingdom of God. You abandoning everlasting life. 
you saying I don't want nothing to do with being a son of Allah. I'm going to follow you. How is he going to get people to sit down and, and be instructed by him? Well, we already know this. Because he's going to take a deadly wound and he's going to be healed. What does that mean? He's going to die and he's going to resurrect from the dead. I'm only mentioning that because that's when it's going to come into what he thinks to change times and laws. Say got nothing to do by changing no Sabbath day. Then people did that because they was on some other type of time. That ain't had nothing to do with this over here. I only mention that because that's bad instruction to read Daniel 7, 25. You see a change and ascribe it to somebody who it ain't got nothing to do with because you're not looking at the context of what's being spoken. Because he's speaking about a specific man in a specific time doing this. And what did we see in Daniel 7, 25 when he would do it? He said he would change times and laws. And they would be given into his hand for a time of times and a dividing of a time. And you know what that is? That's the 1,260 days. That's the 42 months you've seen in Revelation 11. That's the three and a half years that the beast get to reign. That means times and laws will be changed for 42 months, not for a millennium. You know what I'm talking about? That's for his reign. It's right there, plain as day. We're not adding nothing to it. That's what it's saying. Now you look at Daniel 11, he say. How do you think he's going to change the times and laws? By instructing the people who say, I don't want to deal with that word no more. See, we don't think that that's going to happen, that some man is going to pop up and teach people different than what the word say, and people going to follow it. And what does the book say that this man will have understanding of? So that means he's going to understand the word enough to be that bad at teaching it that a jackass would believe it. I'm talking about if you think people smoking bad dope out here now, wait till he pop up. I just want to make sure you understand. Remember what Jeremiah and Ezra and them did? He calls the people to understand. You got to understand what you're looking at. This ain't about, oh, we point this out and point this out. It's for you to understand because I told you, one day I'm going to be dead. You know what I'm talking about? And the next person who teaches in my spot, guess what? One day they going to be dead. But your understanding will be with you forever. You know what I'm talking about? See, it's not about the individual who's giving you the information. It's about the understanding. The understanding can't die. So when you hold on to the that understanding will keep you alive. That's why he say if you're without understanding, you're worthy of death because you don't have life in you. Because he said a man of understanding's words are a wellspring of life. So when you have understanding, you got life in you. That means guess what? You cannot be deceived. That's why we take the time to isolate and focus. And that's why I focus on the most small, nuanced, quote unquote, insignificant words and passages that you can think of. Because that's where your understanding lies. And that's what's going to save your soul. Because that's what you're going to need when you face opposition. I just want to, we, we talked about it many times over the years. Can you just picture in your brain a man dying? Then he's resurrected from the dead. You already know Yahoo shot the only person who did this, but you didn't see him do it. Because remember what he told you, blessed are those that have believed but have not seen. But now you are alive and you've seen it. You've seen him die on TV or, or you might have been there. And now he alive again. Do you understand how deceitful that's going to be to people who not rooted in this man word? They're going to say that got to be him. He was dead. I seen him dead. Then he come, he start making fire come down from the sky. Oh, like that, that's got to, got to be God. You got to understand how persuasive that is going to be. See, you can't because you ain't seen it. You know what I'm talking about? But you have to understand how persuasive. And if you're not rooted in the word, or well, you're going for that. But pretty much about that same amount of time. Remember, we talked about this many years ago. All he's doing is mimicking Elohim to make himself so cold. That's why you got to know the word. He going to be coming in peace like Mashiach came in peace. At the end, that's it. He died at the beginning of his ministry. Yahusha died at the end of his ministry. But see, when you know the word, you can make, you can decipher and know that's a fraud. You got to know that that's a fraud. I ain't going for that. And guess what? When you rooted in the word, guess what you're going to be doing? That's a liar. That's the devil. 
And guess what? Now he's been instructing the people that he got, and you saying he ain't. Guess what? That's gonna make all the nations of the earth do hate you. Now, guess what they want to do? Kill you, lock you up. And guess what you gotta do? Stand firm. That's what you gotta do. You gotta hold fast. You can't be moved by what they're talking about. You gotta only be moved by what you who are talking about. Well, I don't care what you said. I know what my daddy said. My daddy ain't told me that. Some of y'all have been arguing with the children in the playground in your daytime. Well, well, that ain't what my daddy said. My daddy told me that's a lie. Well, that's how you got to roll with the lamb. Well, you got to tell them the same thing. Well, my daddy said that's a lie. I ain't going for that. That's foolishness. And you can't be scared to call that out. You can't be like, oh, we Israel. I don't care who you is, boy. I'm a son of Elohim, boy, and you a liar. You know what I'm talking about? You got to go past being an Israelite. Yeah, it's got 12 gates in New Jerusalem, but guess what? Everybody in there going to be a son of Elohim, boy. It don't matter what tribe you come from. If you ain't born of that word and you ain't no son of Elohim, boy, he, you ain't even getting in because your name ain't in the family registry. He going to look at you like they did in the book of Ezra. I can't find your name in the priesthood. You polluted it. I got to put you out. I what you need to be worried about. We worrying about flesh and blood. You better be worried about that Ruach from on high. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, flesh and blood ain't going to get you nowhere but in a grave. You know what I'm talking about? Then woke up and tossed in a lake where the worm dies not and the fire shall not be quenched. And why would you go out like that? That's what that Isaiah 33 and 14 say the hypocrites are afraid. What does hypocrite mean in Hebrew doors? What does it mean in Hebrew doors? Think swiftly with haste. Oh, she cracking under pressure. On Facebook. Mm, now your study partner want to help you out. Mm. <laughs> Unfaithful. Notice that the people, when you go to talking about here, the only people who get scared are people who ain't faithful. Mm. That's the only people. Man, ain't no such thing as that. What you scared for? Those who faithful, that ain't no concern to me. That ain't my life. You know what I'm saying? I seek a place where there's a new heaven and a new earth. While Elohim ain't ashamed to be called my Elohim. Right? Where peace and righteousness dwell. Right. Where there ain't no tears and ain't no death. That one, that's my lot. I ain't worried about it. Toe fat. Shoot. I'm going to walk by Tophet, and when I look on it, I'm going to look on it with, with derision. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't that what it said? Right. They're going to walk past, and they're going to be upset. They're going to be a whore. They're going to hate looking at you. Mm -hmm. You know why they're going to hate looking at you? Because everybody in there, people who hated your Elohim. So you burn, you bastard, you. You're wicked, no good fool. But see, we ain't supposed to talk like that. Get how they talk in heaven. Death to the wicked. Life to the righteous. That's how they talk in heaven. And repentance to all till I get back around here. Ain't no peace for the wicked. Ain't no peace for the wicked, man. And you ain't supposed to make none for them. You supposed to make them uncomfortable. Uncomfortable enough to change. And if they don't want to change, well, shoot, that's on you. Let's keep on rolling, man. Where we was at? Right. Yeah, keep on riding with that Daniel 11, man. Give me about verse 35, man. Tell me what it says. And some of them understanding shall fall mm -hmm. to try them to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end. To the time of the what? The time of the end. That's right. Because it is yet a time appointed. Time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every mm. god and shall speak marvelous things Against the gods of God. Now you see, we got another God. witness, right? You just seen it in Daniel. You just seen it in, in uh, Ezekiel. You seen it in Daniel again about this man speaking against this man. Of course, you see it in Revelation 12 also, but we're not going around there. Come on with it, man. And shall prosper till the indignation shall be accomplished for that. For that is the determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. See, pause. Remember, we talked about this before. He won't regard the who? The God of his father. When you see that terminology used in the text, who is it always referring to? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that means that this individual would have to come from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, meaning that this man going to have to come from Abraham. Because we know who Isaac's sons is. So where does Esau come from? You know what I'm talking about? He come from Isaac. Who come from Abraham. You know what I'm talking about? Because remember, he the one who had a problem according to the law. He didn't get the covenant with you who were like Jacob got. 
And when he didn't get that covenant with you, who according to the law, the text said he what? He was mad. And he said, when my father died, what are you going to do? I'm going to kill him. He said, I'm going to kill him. Because remember, what did Esau do? He turned down the birthright. He said, what good is this birthright going to do for me? But the whole time, what did Satan ask Yahushua to do to worship him? Because that's all he wants. And a part of that covenant is to worship. Because what is the covenant with Jacob that Isaac made with him? Let your mother's brothers do what? Mm, bow down. And what is the beast going to want people to do? Bow down. Because Esau wants to get what was promised to Jacob, even if it ain't but for a small season. He just wanted for, he only, Yahuwah, man, Yahuwah is so just and righteous that he going to let him get it for a small season to use it to condemn him with. I was going to ask, that's the same as the adversary for taking his birthright in heaven, right? But I ain't even going to say he had a birthright. Well, well, he would, well, he just he lost his station. Maybe he hated his brother, man. He already, he already was a murder. He was already scarred. Because truth be told, Esau hated Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? And he hated Yahuwah because he esteemed the lust of the flesh greater than the benefits of Elohim. And that's somewhere you don't want to be at. You don't want to catch yourself desiring the cares and affairs of this life that it choke off the word. You know what I'm saying? The cares and affairs of this life can take you under real quick. And one thing about the cares and affairs of this life, they can choke the joy, the joy of Yahuwah all real fast. Real fast. Come on with it, man. I mean, Daniel, come on, drop down this here. I want to make sure y'all remember this here. Verse 44. This pertained to what was in Revelation 11. You know, we got to make sure you remember stuff. Daniel 11 and 44. It say, but titans out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Shall what? Trouble him. Mm. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy. Pause. You know what those titans out of the north and the what? Out of the east, east and, and out, out of the, the north, north going to trouble him. You know what that is? What that is, Doris? Turn your head. You know what that is, Muffin? I'm about to whoop me some more. I'm going to whoop my Muffin. No, that was the two witnesses that troubled him. He Remember, right? He said those two. He said the beast that's going to come up out of the bottomless pit is going to come up and kill them two witnesses. Because they were preaching good tidings. Remember, he said in the time of their prophecy, they speaking good tidings. They speaking good news to the people to come back. Those tidings troubled this man. So because they troubled this man, I got to kill him. Remember, it said it brought forth fury. Remember, we didn't read it yet, but he killed those men. And it say people going to be dancing in the street and sending each other gifts because they're going to be happy that these men are dead. Because they have been plaguing sinners. That's why I don't pay to be no sinner. Don't let no Hebrew or no Christian fool you. Because I'm going to tell you something, Hebrews be just as bad uh, justifying being a sinner as the Christians who they ridicule day in and day out. See, the difference between a Christian is they ain't telling you to keep no law. A Hebrew will tell you to keep the law and then tell you he break it in the same breath. Then what the hell you even told me that for? You should have kept that to yourself. We're supposed to keep these laws, brother, but you're not. See, we don't even understand how that sounds. To That's why a lot of these brews can't reach. They be wondering how the one West cats can reach all them street niggas because at least they realize these dudes are authentic. You can't come to me and tell me in one breath to do something and then in the same breath tell me you don't do it. So I know you're not 100. What am I going to listen to you for? But you thinking you being real and relatable. They would rather you look them in the face and say, yeah, man, I've been in the Word for a little while. I'm struggling with my sins, though. Or just stand up straight. No, I don't do that. I don't live like that. Because regular street people, especially the youth, they respect authenticity. They don't care nothing about your information, how you dress, whatever you talking about. Is you about what you say you about? You know what I'm talking about? If you about that, they'll listen to you. But if you ain't about that, they're not going to listen to you. They don't care what you say. They don't care what you're talking about. Because you think you're going to win them off the information. They're going to look at you and say, that nigga full of crap. Why you want me to come over here and be Hebrew and you doing the same thing that the Christian man do? Only difference is you feel like, because you ain't sleeping with the members, that that's better. But you still told me you don't even fear the God you telling me to fear. So why should I fear? See, that don't make sense, my brother. You don't respect him, but you want me to respect him. You can't tell somebody to respect somebody who you telling them you don't respect. 
But in our minds, we think it don't matter because we the people of the book, brother. That don't mean nothing. Live right. And if they get, if they, that's going to win them more than your information. I've been telling you that for years. If you live right, that'll win them. But if you sour, man, the people ain't coming. And guess what? If they don't come, that's just what you as well. And you got to accept that also. You know what I'm saying? I don't get upset. I don't care. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I already know the man solid. I hope you figure it out. You know what I'm talking about? That's all I can tell you. I hope you figure it out. And if you don't figure it out, that's unfortunate for you. Because every man and every woman has to look in the mirror and ask themselves, is this the place you want to go? And are you willing to do the things necessary to get there? Can't nobody give you no information for you to make that determination. Because you the one going to have to make the sacrifices. You the one who's going to have to do the work. And you the one who's going to have to endure. I can't endure for you. I can't do the work for you. I can't make the sacrifices for you. Guess what? The Lord done already made the sacrifice. And he done already did the work. And he done already endured. All he told you was, was to just get down. See, that's the beauty of it. The work has already been done. All you got to do is just get down. Muffin Nia. Muffin Nia. Where you going? Huh, come over here to Daniel 9 and 25. Let's get to this point. I want y'all to see what it say, man. Word for word, step for step. I said nine. I'm sorry. We are seven. My fault. I'm going I'm to give you each word. Now, this is an Aramaic, which is almost the same. I want you to look at think. That Hebrew word is sabar. That is to think, to intend, to bear in mind. Samak. Bot and Raj. So he's thinking and he's intending to change. Let's look at change because it is not Shu in this instance. It is Shana. That is to be altered, to change, to transform. Sean, uh, Noon, and Hey. So he's intending to alter times. What is times? That is Zaman. What it is? That's a set time season so this is what so he's intending to alter a set time and then you have laws and that's da and what is that that's a law of Allahim. so now you got to ask yourself what when you look at seasons when you look at leviticus 23 he said these are the feast of, of yahuwah and they're what in their seasons so he's seeking to and in, in, he's intending to alter times, seasons, and decrees. So we've already looked in the text. One decree that he's seeking to alter is for you to worship another deity other than Yahuwah. So verse 25 is not about the Catholic Church. It's explicitly and specifically about one individual who's seeking to change the word in order to get work. So that means that this man will intend to change Passover or tabernacles to fit him. See, we know that what feast day is he going to seek to change? Doris, what feast day will this man seek to change? With haste. But ask your study partner. Your study partner tapped out. <laughs> Said, no, and you would be correct. And this is how we know this: He's reigning for how long? Three and a half years. What month is pa uh, Tabernacles in? So when you get to six months, guess what feast day is coming? When is Amashiach returning? During when? Tabernacles. Why? Because Tabernacles is representative of what? In gathering. He told you that when he told you the parable of the sower. And then he told you how he would gather all his wheat into his barn. He was giving you the clue. See, you just don't know when during tabernacles he's going to come. And you don't know what year or, uh, or time period is for his date. Well, not date or month, but year that he coming back. But one thing about Yahuwah, Yahuwah don't do nothing the way you just guessing in the wind. 
Remember what he said, don't nobody know what, the day or the hour. He didn't say the month. There you go. He didn't say the season. He said, when you see this here, he said, you know the season. You got to understand, son, your God ain't going to have you out here floating in the wind, wondering and pondering. It's plain when you know the text, then you would know, oh, it's tabernacle. So that means this man going to do this right. Of course, you should know. If a man going to die and resurrect from the dead, he'd have to do it round Passover to alter it and change it to deceive you. He'd have to. Doing that during Pentecost ain't going to work. Doing that during Easter ain't going to work. Why? Because he has understanding of dark sentences. He's going to intend to alter and change the word. So we need to do it according to the word, not according to some solar feast that the heathens do. That's why I don't give a damn about Easter. That's why I don't waste no time talking about it. Let them people worship Easter. Satan ain't got to do nothing to get them people. He already got them. But it's the people who say they believe the word. Them the ones who we going to seek to deceive. Because remember, Adam and Eve, were, we're not going to say Adam. Eve knew what? She knew the word. That's who he sought to deceive. It's not, you can't deceive somebody who don't know the word. And that's not to rag on Eve. That's just the case to point. Because what did the text say? It wasn't Adam in rebellion. It said it was Eve and she was deceived. But what did she know? She told him the word right back. She told him the word right back. So this is an example of Satan is coming to deceive those who know the word to get them to go against it. It's nothing to deceive someone who don't know it. I don't have to do anything. You know what I'm saying? So it's the people who claim they know the word who Satan going to go after. People in the Christian church, they're already deceived. So he don't have to do nothing. Somebody in the Buddhist temple, he ain't got to do nothing. He ain't got to do nothing for no Muslim. They're already deceived. But you've been sitting in here with this book talking about, we the people. And you know all this stuff. And then you see this man die and resurrect from the dead on Passover. A lot of brothers don't believe in Mashiach in the first place. And I'm talking about, and that's for brothers who say they believe on Mashiach. A lot of them don't believe on him in the first place. They just talking. And that day right there going to put them to the test. But come on over here to Revelation 11. But do y'all see that? Was that clear? That's right. Saran hit the nail right on the head. He's coming to deceive the woman, Yasharal. The beast is coming to deceive Eve all over again. Because he told you the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end ain't nothing new under the sun. That's why I appreciate the wire because the wire is kind of like how the word is. It's dual characters coming while one person do one thing and you see it come back and another person on the other. I'm telling you. That's great A storytelling. I watched The Wire when it was on. Then I went to prison. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was The Wire. I got caught up in The Wire. Nigga, we was watching The Wire in the trap. You know what I'm talking about? I need to go lay down. Yeah, in fact, boy, you should be in the trap, getting blazed, watching The Wire. I got locked up during season three. Came back and it was long. <laughs> came back and it was long and old. <laughs> long and old. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but all jokes aside, that's how you will tell the story. You see it, you see the same storyline play out with different characters with the same intent. You know what I'm saying? Because as we discussed, Adam. Laying his life. Did Adam commit a sin? No. He chose to die for his wife. And he became sin, who knew no sin, showing you what Mashiach would do later. Because what could have Adam done, y'all? He could have said, shoot. You by yourself. I get me another wife. That's what he could have did. A lot of brothers don't pay attention to that. He did not. Satan didn't step to him. She died. And he could have let her die. And say, well, I'm going to get me another wife, boy. Shoot. You going to jail. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm telling. That's what he could have did. I'm telling. <laughs> but that's not what he did. He didn't know no sin. Because remember, the text say that. He was not in rebellion. He wasn't deceived. That means he voluntarily chose to die. Because he knew. He chose to do that. See, that was the love that Yahuwah had for Yasharal. See, we miss it. You know what I'm talking about? 
You miss it because you all worried about the man woman dynamic. The woman's so evil. Well, that woman is you, you raggedy nigga. You because you the house of Yasharal and you did the same thing, you punk bastard. You went in the land and you went around and you were deceived and rebelled against you, who just like she did. So, why are you talking about yourself, nigga? You know what I'm talking about? And you know what? Because you know why? That's why they treat the, some of them to treat their lady like that because they hate themselves. Since I hate you, hate me, I hate you too. You know what I'm saying? And I hate you. That's why I hate my brother. Because when I look at him, I see you. So I hate him too. And when I look in the mirror, I hate God. So I hate me too. Why you think people treat people like that? Man? We ain't talking about normal life stuff where you know you had disagreements, butt heads. I'm talking about real deal contempt. Like I just had to tell a couple people this here, right? They've been posting this little thing with the dude with the long dress, the relationship dude. Talking about men have sex with women they don't like. And women they ain't attracted to. I say this is a news flash for you niggas in 2022. I was just amazing to me how many people were shocked at that statement. I'm like, man, the average dude ain't getting no buns like that. He gonna take what he can get. You know what I'm talking about? He, you mean you have sex with women you don't like? What you mean? Why does he need to? You gonna give me some? He's shoot, he gonna take it. You know how many dudes I know that you be up late night and they can't get in contact with nobody? And she, she ain't she ain't the most attractive woman in the world. He going around now. Y'all done seen all these wildebeests out here who got babies. You know what I'm talking about? And you wonder who impregnated her. Look here, man. You got dudes, man. Look here. I done told you this before. I got homeboys that I knew, boy. Be on that cocaine late night. They hitting anything. Anything. No problem. But see, women like, well, I just could Because you know why? I told you, you want men to think like you. Because you know, for the most part, a woman, and that ain't even accurate, that women got to like the man they having sex with, because that's a lie. Because if she feel like it's some type of benefit she going to get from that man, she'll cock her legs over. You know what I'm talking about? And she be like, I can get this lifestyle, or I can get this flight, or I can get this here. She ain't got to like it. She'll have, now, attractive part for the woman, that might be different. She, she might need to be attracted to him. Mm. Well, but that's different because she a sex worker. You know what I'm saying? She a sex worker. So she gonna have sex with anybody at any time if that money right. But there's a lot of women out here, they ain't no sex workers, but shoot, all these women around here, they miss a lot of women out here married to men they don't like, have sex with them every night. She don't like this man. You know what I'm talking about? She's seeing Long Meat Willie on the side. But nobody wanna talk about that though. No, nobody wants this like thing. I can't believe men do that. <laughs> I'm only saying that because it's stuff that people want. To. I'm a man, so I know this. I've been around men my whole life. I know a man will have sex with a woman he don't like. He doesn't have to have a mental and emotional connection with this woman. You know what I'm talking about? It's a physical act for him. You know what I'm talking about? I only say that because... You got a lot of people gonna go with the beast, and they ain't necessarily got to like them. But I ain't gonna be able to buy or sell, so I better. It's gonna benefit me to get down with him. It's the lifestyle. I ain't gotta like him. I ain't necessarily got to agree, but it's more beneficial for me to do it than to not. You got a lot of people been trying to lay down with you who talking about they in the word and don't like him. That's why they fall off. Cause they ain't never like him. They didn't love him. They didn't care for him. They didn't want to be down with him, but they thought it was a benefit in, in doing it, so that's why they did it. Mm, they wanted what they perceived to be blessings. Yeah. Whatever they perceived those blessings to be. Revelation 11, man. Right. Verse L. I'm just telling you, it's the same thing. That's the only why I mentioned it. See, see, when you, see, when you love somebody, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not looking to get a benefit. What y'all did to that baby? Who is that? Who does that? That root. Mm, he say Shayla got him. Eleven Sam, though. Revelation. Oh, 
Yeah. You all right, Ruth? She looked upset. Nah, you ain't too hurt. Nah, you better go and take her out of here. Get over here. She in pain. Eleven and seven, Revelation. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascend out of the bottom of his pit shall make war against them, shall overcome him and kill him. And their dead bodies in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. And they of the people, kindreds, tongues, nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. After three days and a half, the Ruach of life from Elohim entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from Shamahim saying unto them, come up hither. They ascended up to Shamahim in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake. A tenth part of the city fell and the earthquake was slain. Men 7,000, the remnant were affrighted and gave esteem to the Alahim and Shamahim. Now, verse 8. Oh, Saran said he can definitely attest in all honesty that he's been with several women he didn't like or find attractive. See, I'll be honest with you, all jokes aside, most men do that because most men are raised to be led by their lusts. And when you led by your lusts, and you got an opportunity to bust, you're going to hit whoever offer. You know what I'm talking about? It's only when you value your seed and, 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 your, and yourself as a man that you won't have sex with anybody. Now, see, you ain't got to be in the word to get to that point. Because you got dudes in the word who don't value their seed and, and, and still will have sex with anybody. That's why you got all these brews always complaining about women all the time. Because you a simp and a sucker and you keep getting bust downs and whores to lay down with and then you upset because you keep picking whores because you's a fool. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying that every woman in the world is a whore. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is a lot of these dudes pick whores and then try to paint with a broad brush that all these women in the world are whores. No, the women that you choose are a whore. You would have to ask yourself, why you keep attracting whores? Or what I just had to tell a brother today, these women don't want to be married. Well, if you know the woman don't want to be a wife and don't have a desire to be one, why are you entertaining her? That's your fault. You deserve whatever you get. I don't feel sorry for you. If you if you, if you you had met Johnny right, he looked you in the face and you said, I want to be married. He said, oh, I want to be a husband. And then you kept messing with him, right? You would get what you deserved. Don't you, you agree? You know what I'm talking about? Because he had pretty much told you that. Now, Donna, if you looked in the face and said, I want you to be my wife. She said, oh, what do I want to be a wife for? So you can oppress me? And you married her anyway. Who the fool? Mm, okay, then. Now, I'm just saying that because you get what you, what you deserve by what you allow. Because if this person tell you it's not what they want, and then you trying to make them be what you want, you're a fool. You deserve what you get. Because they told you, even if they didn't directly tell you, if their actions were showing you that they didn't want to be a husband or they didn't want to be a wife, why are you still dealing with them? That means you don't love yourself enough. You don't respect yourself enough to say, you know what, this woman don't want to be no wife. Let me just leave her alone and let me just keep doing what I was doing. And if you who are allowed and I come across a woman who want to be a wife, then that's what it is. If this man don't want to be a husband, why is you giving your womb and your time to this man? That don't make sense. I'm a cousin, dude. Girl, she forced me. Yeah, she forced him to marry her. She ain't forced him to do nothing. She was ready to get married. He wasn't. I didn't have about two, three babies. I don't you know, on the side. That's how I but see, he, but see, he a fool. Cause you didn't have to marry this woman. You know why he married that woman? Cause he was scared she was gonna leave. Mm -hmm. You should have just let her leave. Cause you didn't want to be there no way. No, no. What did it say? Nineteen forty-three. What's that mean? Decline. Head down, lay it down. So, so she put the pistol to his head. <laughs> put, a, put, a, put a pistol to his head at the courthouse, huh? No, 
That boy got up on his own volition and walked. <laughs> she ain't put nothing on it. That nigga dumb. See, that's the lie he telling you, man. She forced me, bro. She forced me. She didn't force you to do nothing. Man, let me tell you something, man. The reason why I say this, can't nobody force nobody to do nothing. You all have choices. Now, the choices you have, you may not like, but you got a choice. You know what I'm saying? Well, then she doubly stupid. So this is just a marriage of two jackasses. She's <laughs> well, she got extra country with that one. Definitely. Because that don't make sense. It don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? See, now having sex is one thing. But, but marrying somebody, why would you marry somebody who you don't want to be married to? See, now, see, I'm going to be honest with you. Most men, they come over time where they look at this woman and be like, I don't want to be married to her no more. And instead of just leaving, they just sit there and be miserable. You know what I'm talking about? Just leave. The reason why I say that because eventually you either going to die early, you know what I'm saying, because of all that pent up stuff you got in because you're dealing with somebody you don't like, or you're going to go out here and you're going to disgrace and dishonor your family name by doing things you ain't got no business. You know what I'm talking about? Because for me personally, if you get to the point that now you want to go sleep with two, three other women besides your wife, that means you need to leave that woman because clearly that's not where you want to be at. Why do all that? Who got time for that? You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time for that. Now you got two, three babies on the side. For what? Miami Blast. Miami Blast. He dimmed down with Larry Sinclair. You know who that is? Larry Sinclair, the man who say he used to give fellatio to your favorite guy. Who's your favorite guy? You voted for him. Okay, then. You don't know who I'm talking about? Yes. Just don't go vote for nobody. Yes, it was. No, no, I'm not making this up. There was a gentleman. These videos probably can't be found on YouTube. But there was a gentleman by the name of Larry Sinclair, a white gentleman. He was a homosexual prostitute. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly. But one thing I see, the reason why I believe it, because I've been incarcerated, I've been around sodomites. And one thing I learned about them sodomites is if they say they have some type of physical relation with you, the likelihood of that happening is 99.9% because they know it's consequences for saying you did something with a man and you didn't do that. You know what I'm talking about? Like you just can't walk around to me, I had sex with him and then you didn't because that man going to come see you about that. You know what I'm talking about? He going to come see you about that. But I done seen where a homosexual made an accusation by the man and the dude was standing there mealy mouth like, boom, I'd never get that one out. Well, I was at road prison, boy, that dude came in there. He was a punk. He liked to play ball. You know what I'm saying? That nigga get the ball, he want to post you up. And nigga wonder why nigga just getting out the way. You know what I'm talking about? He's like, y'all ain't going to guard him? Hell no. <laughs> that nigga can scope. It's one thing if we got to face up. You want to turn your booty to me? I'm straight, bro. You know what I'm saying? The basket is yours. You know what I'm saying? Free lane. Easy buckets. Easy buckets. Get off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was a dude I knew from Panama City. And he was acting funny when the punk got there. And then the punk came and said something. He was like, hold on now. You know I messed with you, Flame. I said, boy, what you, you ain't going to say nothing? He told me he trying to act like I, he, I, he was pitching. You know what I'm talking about? He talking about I was catching. I was pitching too. I said, come on, bro. I said, because I ain't know the nigga was on that. He couldn't be my friend after that. You know what I'm saying? I had to stop fooling with a nigga after that. I can't hang with you, bro. You a punk. I don't want nobody thinking that I'm gay because you gay. You know what I'm talking about? Because that's how that go down in that environment. If you hanging around with dudes who mess with sissies, then the sissies think you mess with sissies too. You know what I'm saying? And bro, I ain't on that. Because boy, I'm going to stab one of these niggas. These niggas come at me on some junk like that. Boy, don't play with me like that, man. I will turn this five into 25, boy. Shoot, my homeboy kept one. You know what I'm talking about? I had a five year bid. I didn't need to keep one. I could get one if I needed it. You know what I'm talking about? Shoot, boy, about that one there, boy, about disrespecting my manhood, boy, I'm going to stab you. I got a cut. No, I'm talking about why I was there. He was already in. I was already there. 
Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Tell him, man, that's that, that's a sad mm-hmm. state of affair because he was quiet. Yeah. He didn't say nothing to the dude. That's how I knew the dude wasn't lying. And if and I think y'all can use your imagination on pitching and catching, so we ain't got to go no further. Nigga say, boy, you around here to turn yourself into a catcher's glove, boy. Mid, mid. Man, I'm telling you, man, that's how I go down. But come on, y'all, give me y'all examples for Sodom and Egypt. How Jerusalem is symbolic of Sodom and Egypt according to the text. <laughs> what you say? Well, shoot, he say, I'm going to just ask for a transfer before I turn 5 to 25. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Man, FDOC, they don't give a damn. You know what I'm talking about? Shoot, nigga, you, you can ask whatever you want. It ain't enough time for your transfer. You better transfer that knife in his bank. Transfer it quick. Or, 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 see, because I ain't going to the box. Isaiah 104. What you got? Isaiah 1 and 4. He got Isaiah 1 and 4. Let's see what he got over here. Isaiah 1 and 4. That's for who? Oh, Jerusalem being like all oh, Sodom. Mm, Sodom. Yeah, sure. that's what he got. I know what he got. <laughs> <laughs> what one and four gonna do? You supposed to be in ten. Well, yeah, right. you read from ten on down. I ain't reading all that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get to it to the point. <laughs> nah, her four, man. That's <laughs> one and four. Mm. He's, Isaiah one and four. Ah, a sinful nation, people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors that have forsaken Yahuwah. They have provoked the Kadash one of Yasharal under anger. They are gone away backward. So this is what you got to establish. They're what? They're laden with perversive, per, to depravity and perverting the word. Because that's what iniquity is, right? You're perverting the word or you're depraved. He said they're corruptors. Look up corruptors. Tell him what it is. He said it's a sinful nation. These people always sin. A seed of evildoers. Mm. The word is shaka. Mm-hmm. To destroy, corrupt, go to ruin, decay. Mm. They like to destroy. He said, why should we be stricken anymore? So we'll need all that because that's when he's talking about trying to get the sun else with. Look at verse 9, though. Except Yahuwah of hosts had left us a very small women, remnant, we should have been as Sodom. We would have been like unto Gomorrah. Get wrong, Genesis 19 and 24 and tell them what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. This is for somebody who might not know. You know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? What happened to them, Glory? Sodom and Gomorrah. But this is the thing, right? That's what, uh, why I want to establish this here, right? They had more going on in Sodom and Gomorrah than just playing butthole pack. <laughs> they had a whole lot more going on. <laughs> but do you know what kind of sin? Mm, they did. All types. Hold on. Before before he read that read like this here, right? Come over here to the epistle of Jude. Epistle of Jude. I think Jude tell you about it. Epistle of Jude, verse 7. That boy yelling at you, cuz. Mm. He said personally he wouldn't accept that. James Johnny said it had to be accepted. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how he got that pronunciation. That's what James say because he don't pronounce my name right. Yeah, she think that's funny. That's a new name. He been calling me that. I know James about five, six years. That's why he said. I don't would be even funny when the dude on the uh, at the bank that one time. Call me, he was like, Daedra, Daedra. I was like, how you got that out of that? Like, how you mispronounce that? But you know, some people, hey, man, that's what they own. Verse 7, even the Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner give themselves over to fornication. Look up fornication in Greek for me, man. Tell them what it says. And going after strange flesh are set forth an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What is fornication in Greek? 
that is a cornmeal to go a horn. To go what? A horn. Mm, and what else? Give oneself over to fornication. Mm. So guess what they was over there doing? They were hoeing. Spiritually and physically. All right. Now look up strange flesh. Let's see what that is. Some people like it. They say that's what they say. They do some strange things for some change. Mm -hmm. I guess they do a leave a little bit more strange. Strange is heteros is of uncertain of, oh, nope. to other, another, other, a number. That means say you go after other flesh. Meaning strange flesh and context meaning you a man who the whole folk to be strange to you. <laughs> now see the thing. <laughs> that ain't supposed to be common. See, now he just hit that one there too, right? Because we talk only reason I'm mentioning this because we we read it, we talked about it a little bit about Leviticus 19 the other day, right? All right. What did it say? Because Saran just mentioned it, touching animals. That's strange flesh. You know, that's what the Muslims mm -hmm. like to do. They say if ain't no woman around, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And there's a lamb there, you know, you can deflower with that lamb. That's what Muhammad said. I ain't making it up. Look it up for yourself. He the last prophet that like to hit a lamb from the back. Nasty bastard. I ain't listening to no nigga tell me I can have sex with a lamb. I ain't making this up, by the way. I'm going to look it up. Verify it for yourself. <laughs> hit no lamb. That man married a nine-year-old girl. Khadija was nine years old. Our law don't, our law don't condone that. We didn't talk about that. Uh, that's why what we read over there in the big at 19 the other day. Boy, child molestation, boy, that book say you supposed to go to hell, boy. But guess what people tell you? The Bible don't speak against molestation. Yeah, dude, you just don't know how to read. You're dumb. You're, you're, you're just dumb. It literally said you are not supposed to go after your own nakedness. That means to have sex, you're not supposed to touch your daughter. That's literally what it said. You're not supposed to touch your daughter. You ain't, he, didn't even, he didn't even make mention of not touching your son because that was just supposed to be a given. That you ain't touching no little boy. The same way we know what our law say supposed to happen to a rapist. He the same as a what? A murderer. A murderer. That's what the law say. But you know most, most people who believe the word, when they hear people who don't believe the word, talk, they don't never straighten them about that. And show them, nah, nah, but he don't condone no rape. He said this situation is the same as a murderer. You worthy of death. Muhammad going straight to hell, nasty bastard. You know what I'm talking about? You marrying a nine-year-old girl. You know them nasty people overseas. They still be doing that, marrying them little behind girls, man. Man, you who don't stamp that? We know that just from our law in and of itself. Because when, when Judah's son died, he said, you got to wait. He told Tamar, you got to wait till he of age. Absolutely. That, that, that man is called said he was the most wickedest man on earth. He said he was the wickedest man alive. Call himself the, and as much as niggas love Michael Jackson, you got to question Michael Jackson on the fact he put him on his album cover. You know what I'm talking about? I don't care how much you like him. That's questionable. I ain't saying the man did XYZ. I ain't saying he even co-signed putting this man on his album cover. He was there. What's that? It's a whole bunch of stuff when you look at these dudes, you have to question their character. What? I don't know what the thing is. I heard Man, man, at the end of the day, unless you've seen that person violating a man or, or, or a child, it's all alleged. No, I, I will say this here, right? And all, 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 all jokes aside, when you look at the stuff they put in front of you versus stuff where he was talking and it wasn't mass spread, you can hear from that kind of conversation that he wasn't on that. Not touching no children. Oh, I done seen numerous videos where it's just Mike talking. This ain't like mass media produced stuff or put out when he having conversation. And when you listen to this man talk, you can tell that that bro wasn't on that. 
like I said, when I see that nigga hang the jet out the window, regardless of what he said, you violated the jet right there. Yeah, but I'm talking about, but they said this man right here with Jesus juice laying in the bed, touching nigga booty hole. Please. They said that they would he would put wine in a Coke can and call it Jesus juice. Hey, I ain't saying I believe I'm just saying he violates church. You don't do church right. Well, that was his child. Well, yeah, yeah. Hey, he said you child. He felt like this here. Yeah, you want to see my daughter, daughter, my no white baby here? Look at it. <laughs> that wasn't his baby. You think you jit over the ledge, you crazy thing around. Right? Now I ain't gonna say that because you got some people who will beat the brakes off their chair and they ain't gonna touch their wee wee. I'm just saying, all over around the world. <laughs> I'm just saying, but I ain't saying I'm just saying violated. <laughs> nah, nah, they gonna get violated. <laughs> I ain't butt naked. <laughs> okay, but some of y'all got whoop butt naked. Your mama ain't touching wee wee. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You ain't know. <laughs> and almost every, and almost every <laughs> nigga in here that, that got out the bathtub butt naked and caught that. You want? You think it's all good? The door fly open. Ha ha! Who's next? <laughs> you trying to run? You ain't even dried off yet. She been standing there at the door waiting to hear the, the, uh, the drain come out so the water can stop coming out. I got it now. You got whooped like that? You shaking your head like a yeah, I don't think everybody got whooped. You gonna live like people do. I don't think everybody got whooped like that. You ain't never get whooped like that? I, ain't I say I have. Mm. <laughs> you know what the word part is? They go to whooping you. Hit you in your groin, and they feel like you ain't supposed to block your groin. Nigga, that's the most sensitive area on my body. It's okay, man. I'm gonna rub them later. <laughs> well, you ain't right, boy. I like to, you don't know. <laughs> you know you that's hard. Oh, my goodness. Hey, come on, man. Give me the Genesis 1924. But nah, man, Mike used to have conversations about that, man. Mike was on some old... Man, they were mad at Mike because Mike was getting them for that bread. So they were trying to destroy it. That's not to say that he might have not did XYZ. This man was in the music business a long time. But a lot of the character assassination was this nigga owned the Beatles' whole catalog and he owned half of Sony. You know what I'm saying? And, and they just thought he was some old soft-spoken, sweet, sweet booty dancing nigga. And he was smarter than all of them. Do you know what I'm saying? I can't even say finesse him. He just was a shrewd businessman and bought a mass amount of people's music and owned it. See, I know most of y'all in here don't really understand the significance of owning the Beatles catalog, but owning the Beatles catalog is like having a billion dollar portfolio. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, he fell out with Paul McCartney about that, if, if some of you are aware. You know what I'm saying? Came to him in the 80s. He think he said something to him about it. And right after that, Mike bought the catalog. And then Paul McCartney stepped to him. Because there's a couple songs if you got uh, Thriller and, and uh, that Paul McCartney's on. And he was pissed. He was like, how could you do that, mate? And he say, shoot, nigga. Buy the bread. That's why when they kept saying that he was broke, that was a lie. How can you be broke when you own the Beatles catalog? All he got to do is license this out, and that's bread. All day long. That's the, And guess what they did? He died and they sold the catalog back to Sony for nowhere near what it was worth. You know what I'm saying? A fraction. It's like $300 million that Sony bought back the catalog for. You know what I'm saying? That's why he out of here. All that other stuff, you know what I'm saying? That's just, You got to remember, I've always told you this here, and I, and I learned this in a book that I got when I was in high school. It was Niggas the Gods, Volume 2. You know what I'm talking about? And he said, before you can kill a man, you must make him killable. We've already talked about that because before they killed Yahoo Shah, they had to make him killable. Before you kill a man, you have to assassinate his character and destroy his character enough that when he is murdered, that nobody will have any problem with it. That's why in American society, you can be murdered and no, I'm talking about a black man, and ain't nobody gonna feel no way about it because your character has already been destroyed. You know what I'm saying? By saying he was a child molester, by saying that. That nigga was a seller, so it was easy to defend the sellers. 
I mean, you ain't even got to be no sinner. It's not difficult. Remember, they brought false witnesses. They were going around telling people, if you believe, if you if you follow him, we're going to put you out in synagogue. They were calling them devils. You know what I'm saying? This this type of conversation is being had amongst the people. Remember, there's the pastors where they say there was division amongst the people about whether he was the Mashiach or not. You know what I'm talking about? And all of that stuff was framed from the scribes and Pharisees to destroy his character because they knew that they were intending to kill him. To kill him. Oh, niggas, the God's volume two. Each. I don't even know if you can still find that book. I know it's red. See that also, she mentioned that too, like with Prince. They did a lot of that with Prince. Prince was worth a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Because they were talking about owning, owning your work. And then the work that they had is was worth over a half a billion dollars. You worth more to me dead than a lot. I'll get you out of here and take it because you're not going to give it to me. But before I kill you, I got to make you look crazy. What they did to Prince is they made it seem like that he was addicted to drugs and that he was on prescription medication. And people who knew him said that that man didn't use any of those things. You know what I'm talking about? That's what you've seen. I, and I'm only mentioning this because I just see that's what you've seen Dave Chappelle say when he got on. Uh, whatever company that was, I was streaming uh, Chappelle show. Because remember when he left, they tried to assassinate his character. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, he on crack. He doing this. He doing that. Because in order, if I'm going to take you out or diminish you so I can get something of value from you, I have to assassinate your character. Let me see if you can find that online, man. I ain't seen that book since 1998. Yeah, it's still there. It's on Amazon for twenty dollars. Paperback. Yeah, it is. That's it. It was written by a dude from the Nation of Islam. Yeah, you know, we was on all type of stuff in high school, man. Now, Nipsey, I, I ain't going to go that far with Nipsey because Nipsey ain't had that big of a profile. Ain't nobody really know who that nigga was. You know what I'm saying? On no mass scale. And he ain't, have, and he ain't really have much for them to kill him for. You know what I'm saying? But Mike, though, Mike on the Beatles catalog, bro. Now, I know he know who the Beatles is. I know my mama know. You know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? You know about the Beatles, bro? I'm talking about their cultural impact. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, their cultural impact is large. They're a very, very popular group. They were manufactured. Now, they didn't talk about doing no drugs. That is the type of music they made. But I mean, they, that wasn't the kind of music they had going on. They were really mimicking black people. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, <clears throat> who else got something for Sodom and, and Egypt? Come on, little Johnny, let's roll. What you got? Yeah, I, oh, nah, I hear all that. That sounds like you ain't got nothing for me. That nigga, that's old nigga, son. You can't be here. That nigga have him, boy. Hold on, hold on. Okay, you say Isaiah 3 and 9? Hold on. This little Johnny's on. I see ain't nobody trying to find Egypt. Just Sodom, huh? That's all y'all worry about. I understand. You want to talk about the bottom boys. Isaiah 3 and 9. We got Monte next, though. Mm. <laughs> Let me back this up to verse 8, though. For Jerusalem is ruined and Yehuda is fallen because their tongue and their doings against Yehuda to provoke the eyes of his esteem. See, remember I told you that you're going to see this. We got to look at this in the gospel also. Because what do we see? A, 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 a seed that people that were corruptors, a sinful nation, a seed of evildoers. See how, see how we were talking about all that? See how you bring it back on home? Remember in Luke chapter 11, it said they were provoking Mashiach to do what? So they could speak some words so they could find some mean to accuse them. See, that's the seed of evildoers. Because what does it say that Satan do in heaven day and night? Notice how they were corruptors. Now look at what it said. It's ruined. And they provoke the eyes of his esteem. And what do they do with Mashiach all the day? Remember when he came to him, they say, Master, who should we do? They, he said, why you tempt me? They were provoking him. You know what I'm saying? 
because they were at Sodom. Next, the next thing you say, to show up their accountants who witnessed against them, they declared their sin in Sodom. Let his blood be on our children's children. And they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they rewarded evil unto themselves. They say, hey, man, we got a law, and our law say he ought to die. And when they said, let his blood be on our children's children, as we discussed last night, the only way that the evil won't be rewarded is because he said, I will forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Because if that's why Peter said, I hope to God that you did it, you were ignorant, you didn't know what you were doing. Now you got a chance to go in the city of refuge. Because you killed the man ignorantly, not knowing. Because he ain't had no hate in your heart before. But see, there's a difference. Some of them people that was out there that said, let his blood be on our children's children. He said, they done hated me and my father. It was hating their heart. So you knew what you were doing. You knew what you were doing. What you got, Monte, besides the one he just used? Mm. Mm, 16 and 48. Now, see, he went and got one of the good ones. The good ones. Ezekiel 16 and 48. He said, as I live, said you who Elohim. Come here, Abby. What you over there doing? What you got? What you got, Abby? You trying to run away? You cannot escape. I got you now, Abby. Sixteen and forty-eight. As I live, save you, who Elohim, Sodom, your sister have not done. She, she nor her daughters have done. You and your daughters. Behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom: pride, fullness of bread, abundance of idleness was in her, in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw. So who is this Sodom that is being referred to in Ezekiel 16? It's a volume one, two for that book, too, East. It's a uh, brown, it's a brown or uh, cream color on the cover. See, back then, that's when we were reading them books and Dr. York books. You know what I'm saying? Dr. York was a weird guy. You know what I said? This was back in like 97. You know what I'm talking about? Where is this place referring to? Who is he? First off, you need to understand Ezekiel 16. Who is he talking to? He's talking to both of them. But when he's talking to Israel, that's why he say your sister. When he's talking to Israel, he call her Samaria. You know what I'm talking about? When he's talking to Judah, he call her Sodom. See, let's back up to 16 so you can see. Remember, this is parent, This is when he go to talking about when he found you in your blood and all that stuff, and you opened your feet to everybody that passed by. And then when you get down here to about verse 43, he said, because you have not remembered the days of your youth, you fretted me in all these. Behold, I will also recompense your way upon your head, say if you are Elohim, and you should not commit this lewdness above all the abominate above all your abominations. Behold, everyone that used the Proverbs I use proverb against you saying as the mother her daughter you your mother's daughter that loathe her husband and her children you the sister of sisters which loathe their husbands and their children your mother a Hittite your father an Amorite who is the mother that's a uh, Hittite mother with hate Doris can't help you who is the mother Deidre who is the mother? Sarah. The father is a Hittite. Who is the father? Abraham. Let's continue. Your elder sister, Samaria, she and her daughters that dwell at your left hand, and your younger sister that dwell at your right hand, Sodom, and her daughters. You see this here? Now, if they dwelling at the right hand, guess who that is? On the, What does the right hand symbolize? Friendship. You know, you know, you know, you ain't never say, you know, people say, you, you know what I'm saying? That's my right hand. Nobody never wanted to be considered to be a left hand man. So I just want you all to see that he talking about Israel and he talking about Judah. Where was Ezekiel? Who was Ezekiel prophesying to in his time? He was prophesying to Judah. Because where was Ezekiel during his prophecy? And Babylon. Babylon. Who went to Babylon? 
Judah. Judah went to Babylon. You know what I'm talking about? Now, let's look at that. Fullness of bread. That's what you've seen at the beginning of the chapter. Can anybody tell me in the Gospels where you can see Yasharal moving with the fullness of bread with that being their iniquity? I give y'all what these words mean. Now, pride should be easy. Y'all should be able to isolate the pride. Pride, by definition, is gone. Which is majesty, pride, exaltation, arrogance in a bad sense. Fullness of bread. Fullness here is uh, that satisfaction or one's feel. You know where bread is. Leachum. You say Lamentations 4 and 6? Hold on. Now, abundance of idleness. Y'all remember what Paul said about the women being idle? What was the result of what Paul wrote about women being idle? They become a busybody. Shakat. To be quiet, to be tranquil, to be at peace, to show quietness, to be inactive. So in this one here, you have a, an abundance of inactivity. Now, for us, scripturally, an abundance of inactivity was end up causing you to chase after other gods. You know what I'm saying? Of course, everybody knows the saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? But truth be told, that's why people do get in trouble, because they don't have nothing to do. See, there's one thing about it. You ain't got time to sin if you got things to do. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't going to be lying to you. You would need to pay attention to somebody who always looking to have nothing to do. You got people who worth more than more than everybody in this room put together 15 times over. You know what I'm talking about? And they still get up and go grind every single solitary day. They don't sit around and be like, oh, I'm just going to sit around and do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Warren Buffett, old and dirt, and he get up and go grind every day. Day. That man ain't had to actually go physically do no work in a long time. And he get up and go every day. You know what I'm saying? Because most of us look at, I got money, I ain't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Versus the dedication to what it is that you're doing. You know what I'm talking about? So you have to, you have to check yourself when you find yourself, I don't want to do nothing. Then you need to ask yourself, why are you so damn lazy? Why is it that you don't want to do nothing? And how do you expect to get what you want if you don't want to do nothing? Because you're looking for somebody else to do it for you. Now, see, women have that benefit of having that thought process because they have a vagina. So they figure somebody will come do it for them. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about innate in your DNA. You figure at some point in your physical life that somebody will come and do it for you. A man never has that luxury. Ain't nobody coming to do nothing for him. Be quiet. Ain't nobody ever coming to do nothing for him. He going to have to figure it out. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all ain't found nothing for abundance of bread? I mean, uh, fullness of bread, pride. What else we got here? This is the gospels you're looking for. Fullness of bread, abundance of idleness, being haughty, committing abominations. <laughs> These are all the things that Sodom did, and he said this is what Judah was doing. Remember, that's why you say the city is spiritually Sodom and Egypt, because the behavior that you've seen in Egypt and Sodom was present in Judah. You got dudes who still walk around here and read that verse and think that ain't talking about Jerusalem, think it's talking about another city. Why wouldn't it be another city? You know why? I'm going to tell you, man, most Israelites are full-blown hypocrites and liars because they don't want to accept the fact that your forefathers did some sour stuff and you like to try to overlook it. To try to make you know, you know who that sound like? What that dudes complain women do that they do a whole bunch of sour stuff and try to make themselves seem to be the victor and the good one in the matter when really they were doing all the evil. See, I told you they're the modern woman that they complain about. You are the woman that you complain about. 
to Yahuwah anyway, but you can't see it. We talked about that in Jose 4 too many times that he said that I will have your wives commit adultery because they're married to adulterers and those that don't have understanding are going to fall. Y'all look at that. I'll, find, I'll read these verses that Bella offered. She offered Lamentations 4. You can't use Jeremiah 23 and 14, Bella, because we used that last night. Lamentations 4. And the other time, Joanne will be with us. Look at it. Napping. Nap, nap, nap. Lamentations of Jeremiah 4. Let me see verse 6. You already had you ain't getting none. Okay, that's a little different because that's talking about the punishment. The iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment or the sin of Sodom. Now, let me ask y'all this here. Jeremiah say the punishment of Judah was worse than the punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah. How would you be able to prove that? What would you say? What would you refer to to justify Jeremiah saying that? Yeah, Amos is talking about them overthrowing it, so that's a little different. He said uh, that was Lamentations of Jeremiah four and eleven. Muffin Man, it's a Lamentations of four and six. Muffin Man. What's up? You got my money? Where's my money? You ain't got my money either? I wasn't even talking to you, but I'm glad you reminded me. So neither one of you got my money. Make a fool of me, bro. Where's my money? Got to five o'clock. Five o'clock. Mm. How much you pay for that fake mustache? <laughs> he thought about that one now. Yeah, somebody already dropped Ezekiel 1649, son. Sodom, Sodom did what? What it is is basically like, well, you got cut off from Yahuwah. They just got killed. Everybody yeah. gonna die anyway. You got removed from Yahuwah, and you had to see it. You had to experience it. That's worse. You know what I'm saying? You got you got took away out your spot, exile, go to another land. And know that it's some other people dwelling in your house. See, that's different for a man. See, a woman, y'all can never relate to that. A man get divorced. His wife move another man in his house that he paying for. And he know that he's sleeping somewhere else while his wife's back is getting broke in his house by another man. See, you be wondering what sometimes when you see these dudes, they've been killed their ex-wife. That's why. It don't even be the fact about the money. It's the fact this raggedy whore is having sex with another man in a house that I'm paying for. I'm not paying for you to have sex with another man. There are men who get divorced and have to pay their wives alimony until she get married. And they know she got another man and she refused to get married so that he had to keep paying them checks. You know what I'm talking about? That's why so many dudes go to smoke and crack. <laughs> and I only mentioned that, and I done told y'all this before, right? That's why dudes don't want to get married. Because they see there's no benefit for them. And when you don't want to be there no more, you can leave and you can take everything that I built if he is a man of production. Now, if he ain't a man of production, he ain't got no business complaining about what she gonna take. She can't even see you ain't even got a 401k to take. He ain't got nothing to take. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm gonna mention that because in this society, women complain about it. Why do you men don't want why would a man who who in the top five, ten, two percent of people who earn money want to marry you? And when you decide one day I don't want to be with you no more, 
you can leave and take it. What makes you think you that special? You know what I'm talking about? Because I know these rich niggas in this in this country. If I was a millionaire, I would never get married. Absolutely not. You know what I'm talking about? If I I'm out here sinning, making money, living like that, get married for what? I'm not marrying you. I'm not giving you no access, nothing to nothing I built because you ain't have no hand in that. And I'll be damned. Literally, I would not. Absolutely not. It don't make sense. I'm worth $40 million and you worth a laundry bag. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? A laundry bag? Shoot, not compared to $40 million. <laughs> you must be smoking crack too. <laughs> that don't make sense. I'm talking about for a man who's getting that kind of bread. That don't make sense for him to do that. I ain't got to worry. I ain't signing no prenup because we ain't going to get there. I take care of you like you move, but I'm not marrying you. Not in this system. Absolutely not. It doesn't make sense for me to do that. That don't benefit me. You know what I'm talking about? Because then you can get in and be like, I ain't doing nothing. Now you having sex with the pool boy. Now the pool boy in my house. And I'm paying for it. And, and nigga think that that's cool. That you're supposed to be able to get that. No, man. Absolutely not. Not if I spent my whole yeah, life yeah. building that. See, it's different if you got with her and then you ain't had that and then she yeah. helped participate in the upward trajectory of that. Well, I get that. And even still, if I was to tell you to leave, I wouldn't send you broke. You know what I'm saying? Here's a severance package. You know what I'm talking about? Enjoy your life. But get half. See, you can't get half in Florida. You know what I'm talking about? It's a community state. You know, not a community state. It's an uh, equitable distribution. See, they ain't like California. California community. That's why when you see people, it was some movie she had me watching where a dude got married and they lived in New York, but they also was in California and the lady wanted to have the divorce in California because it would be more favorable to her in California than it would have been for her in New York. You know what I'm saying? But that's different. We didn't talk, all the talk I just had a conversation about this with somebody. Y'all remember what, the, what caused the precipitated the fall of Rome? We talked about this, but it was a while ago. When women started getting freedom, that precipitated the fall of Rome. You know, they had child support in Rome. Just, you know what I'm saying? And it was just certain stuff that they were talking about that when you, when they started giving women those freedoms in Rome, Rome fell not too long after that. And you see in that accelerated push in this country. It's not to say that there's something wrong with women. It's just that when you give women the freedom, the choice to do certain things, they don't have a desire. You're never going to roll that back. You know what I'm saying? See, that's what brothers don't understand. Now, a woman, she didn't, she didn't necessarily. Well, I can't say that because it was millionaires in the early 1900s. A lot of women be lying, talking about your grandma was broke. Man, Ellie May had money. Your grandma was broke. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Because my grandma was a nurse. You know what I'm saying? They, you love niggas like to talk about Madam C.J. Walker. That woman was a millionaire in the early 1900s, and she wasn't the only one. You know what I'm talking about? So them stories about how a lot of women just was around here destitute and broke and had to stay with Willie Earl is a lie. You know what I'm talking about? It's a bold face lie. You know what I'm talking about? Women could work. They could have left. A lot of women chose not to leave for whatever reason. But now women have way more freedoms than they believe that they have. And now they be like, I don't want to do X, Y, Z. Now the men are upset. That's why some men try to shit. That's why you're going to die alone with a dog. But she's still not going to marry you. She still don't want you. You know what I'm talking about? And you telling her she gonna die alone ain't gonna change. You ain't gonna shame her to be with you. She look like I'd rather live alone than be with you. See, that bother a lot of dudes. You mean to tell me you'd rather live with a dog than live with me? She say, shoot, what's the difference? You see the dog. You the dog, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? I'm just sitting there telling you that just for real. Y'all like this. Y'all may not talk to a lot of people in the world. You do. You got a lot of people. You know you do. She got a lot of friends in the world. The couple, nigga, you got about 22 and a half. These got about a good, strong nine and three quarters. Is that about right, about nine and three quarters? Mm. No, I'm talking about this forfeit the mindset of them, especially the more educated she is, she going to look at like, I don't have to put up with this. You know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily that it's really anything you putting up with. 
It's really something that before it's the same way what people do with you who are you like carlos miller was clown cr clowning about you have created a man that doesn't exist you know what i'm talking about you what you got a nigga who do picnics and poetry with long penis and long money and all this type of stuff and that man don't exist you know what i'm talking about he's a killer but he's nice you know what i'm talking about he's disciplined but he's spontaneous you know what i'm talking about He's a gentleman, but a thug. That man doesn't exist. A godly gentleman. That doesn't exist. I mean, a godly thug. That doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? There's no such thing. But you know where that comes from? Me and Fat Boy were talking about this here. You know that they say scientifically that every man a woman has had sex with, that his DNA goes into her bones. This has scientifically been proven, allegedly, that's what they say. That every time a man releases his seed in your body, that that seed literally gets into the bones of that woman. They looking like, no, oh, yeah, nigga. You carrying about three, four niggas in your bones. <laughs> Amos 3, I got you. I'm already around that too right now because she mentioned Amos 4. Which verse you talking about? Okay, boom. Yeah, I'm going to rock that out of this. Let me see something what Saran say. He said, when his ex left, she got granted benefit money, help towards her rent, left me, she rented a house, and then told me she was going. And then I had to pay weekly maintenance, too. See, that's why they say, see, I'm a killer. <laughs> I'm a hot hit, man. I'm a killer. I only mention that because you know what the text say? You'll be with your wife and be one flesh. That's what the dude was referring to in regards of word-wise why Yahuwah didn't have the intent for women to be with more than one man because literally that man DNA merges in her body. You know what I'm saying? And I mentioned that because what we were talking about, about the seed of copulation a while back. You know what I'm talking about? So you understand that when that seed of that word enters into you, guess what you become? Flesh of his flesh, bone of his bones, and you become one with him. You know what I'm saying? They say the more you serve God, the more you the more you know what I'm saying, you become, you take on their act. That's why you wonder why a lot of these women crazy, because you done, you done had sex with 10, 15 dudes. You done took on the personality of these men, not because you had sex with them, but because you were intimately involved with them. You know what I'm talking about? And now you've taken these personalities of these men, and you've made one perfect man out of 10 men. You know what I'm talking about? That's an impossible standard to live up to. And that's what people have done with Yahuwah. They done went to this teaching and that teaching and that teaching and that teaching and you done took them and put them all together to make a God that does not exist. You know what I'm saying? Because you done took all, remember, because I go back to the intelligence part, you're taking that seed because the seed is the word of Elohim. So you're taking these seeds in as forth as that word and they melt it into your body and it's shaping and forming your thought process. That's why he told you, don't be cared about with strange doctrines getting tossed to and fro. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said, I presented you to Mashiach as a chaste virgin because I don't need you defiled with any man's seed other than your husband's. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to take on the thought process of that seed or that word that you have received. Amos 3 and 1, by the way. He said, hear this word that Yahuwah has spoken against you, O sons of Yasharal, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Mizraim. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he have no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is formed? Shall take up a snare from the earth and had take nothing at all. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and Yahuwah have not done? Surely Yahuwah Elohim will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion have roared, who will feel? Yahuwah fear. Yahuwah Elohim has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Can't nobody speak lest Yahuwah give you room to speak. Now, who else got something for uh, Egypt and Sodom? Jeremiah 7 25. Jeremiah 7 25. You better, I'm gonna watch your Eugene. Eugene, get you, get you, mean Gene. What you say, mean Gene? Jeremiah 7 25. 
So that one is a little different because he talking about rising up out of Egypt. See, it's something, if you want to look at something about Egypt, you need to get Isaiah 30. Egypt going to be a little bit more difficult to find verses for than, than, than Sodom was. To understand what you had going on in Egypt, for it to be spiritually Egypt, Egypt, you wouldn't have you couldn't look necessarily look for verses that say Jerusalem is like Egypt. Go ahead. That's what you would that's what I'm gonna say. That's what you're gonna have to do. Jeremiah 7 25. Since the day that your fathers have brought came forth out of the land of Israel unto this day. I have sent unto you all my servants the prophets daily, rising them early, sending. You have not hearkened unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore you shall speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to you. You shall call unto them, but they will not answer you. But you shall say unto them, this a nation that obey not the voice of Yahuwah their Elohim, nor receive correction. Truth is perished and cut off from their mouth. Cut off your hair and cast away and take up lamentation on high places. For you who have rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Yehuda have done evil in the sight, in my sight, saith Yahuwah. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. They have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Himnam, to burn their sons and daughters in the fire, which I commanded not. Neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that it shall no bow call Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Himnam, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. And the carcasses of this people shall be for meat for the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray away. Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Yehuda and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegroom, the voice of the bride, and the land shall be desolate. Now, one of the things when you're looking at with, with Egypt, what was going on in Egypt? Oppression. So when you were looking at seeing how Jerusalem was spiritually Egypt, you would have to isolate the places where you see where they were oppressing the people. And when you look at when Mashiach was speaking in Matthew 23, what was he talking about? The scribes putting burdens on the people's back that they wouldn't move. They were oppressing the people and by violence at that. Because when you look at oppression, it usually refers to violent injustice. Which is what you saw going on in Egypt was violent injustice. But you get that Genesis 19 24, by the way. Then you can go back to 1 John chapter 3. <clears throat> Muffinia. Then Yahuwah rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire. Brimstone and fire. From Yahuwah out of Shamaim. Mm. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Mm. That's good. Hold on. I got you, Sean. Hold on. Leave her alone. Sean stated that Egypt was spiritually related to Jerusalem because of not only the persecution of the saints, but also the burden that describes placed on the people due to the customs of man's traditions. And that is correct. And that is oppression. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing you have to look at. They put hard bondage. You know what I'm saying? They weren't setting the people free. Remember, Shiach say, he that commits sin is a servant of sin. And he said, and if the son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. See, that's the other part we ain't got to it yet. We kind of started it talking about the uh, city of refuge, but that how he came to give you rest. You know what I'm saying? When you were in Egypt, you didn't have no rest. See, when you would see, this is what you get the difference between Egypt and Sodom. Sodom was more of a place where they fulfilled the desires of their flesh, whatever those desires were. And Egypt was a place of bondage and oppression. And they brought all those things into Jerusalem into, to Jerusalem and made them both. Where it was a place of oppression and a lust filled location. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you come to America, that's why people say America is Jerusalem. That's the great city because it's spiritually Egypt and Sodom. Because see, they do the Memphis stuff over here, and see, they over here with the sissies. See, that's bad teaching in and of itself because he's talking about a particular location where a particular event was going to occur. Why would the two witnesses be prophesying in America? Where he got crucified? We know he didn't get crucified over here. But the reason why I say that is because it would take a man to actually be studying the text to explain to people 
This is why he called this place this, because this is how they were behaving, and that's why they crucified the man. You know what I'm talking about? Because at the end of the day, why was Egypt upset? Oh, you moving these people from their labors. He said, and what did he say? The taskmasters, what did Pharaoh say? Put more burns on them. And what did it say the scribes and Pharisees were doing? What did he, Mashiach, say the scribes and Pharisees were doing to the people? Put more burdens on them that they can't move and won't move. You know what I'm saying? What did Paul tell him when, in Acts when he was talking about you putting a burden on these people that even our forefathers couldn't carry? You know what I'm talking about? So this is how they eat it. And guess what Pharaoh wanted to do? Well, we might as well just kill these niggas because I'm tired of dealing with them. And then you get with Sodom. Sodom, man, they just being freaky. They also proud. What was the pride in? Because they didn't feel that there was anything wrong with them being a sodomite, which is why you would see a gay pride thing now worldwide because in their arrogance, because remember, arrogance is something that Yahuwah hates, according to the text. They hate this man so much that they feel that I'm lifted up and behaving this way. See, it's not the fact of being homosexuals. It's that they feel like there's nothing wrong with how I'm behaving. Like you hear them, if your God, like you, this is the thing, right? A sissy think I'm going to get mad because you tear up a body. I don't care. That didn't defend me. That's a book. You know what I'm saying? You ain't did nothing to you, whore. You the dummy. You spent 10 15 20 dollars on something to tear it up. You the fool. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what you do with that. See, that's not going to see a Muslim might get upset. He burned the Quran. I don't care about you burning no book. But once you go to running your mouth, now we got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Now I got to cut you. You know what I'm saying? I got I got to come on here. I got to check you. You know, that's why Saran ain't nothing new under the sun. All you see is human beings behave the way they've always behaved. When you turn around and you look at Satan, that's how Satan going to be coming. Because guess what the beast going to be doing? You can be free to live any way you want to live under the beast. So you're going to have the Sodom type deal going on in the earth again. And then you're going to have Egypt replayed because he's going to be oppressing people and putting burdens on people's backs. You know what I'm talking about? And the only people who ain't going to go for that, get them Revelation 12 and 9. We finna get on out of here, man. <clears throat> and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. That old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceived the whole world. He deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. They cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in Shamayim. What he said? Now has come salvation and strength. Okay, what? Salvation and strength in uh -huh. the kingdom of our Elohim, the power of, of his Amashiach, mm. the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They did what? Overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. How were they able to overcome by the blood of the Lamb? By the word of their testimony. Paul, what would you read to see show how they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb? Somebody get me Hebrew 9 and 14. So how much more shall the blood of Amashiach, who through the eternal Ruach offered himself without spot to Elohim, purge your conscience from dead works to serving the loving Elohim? Mm. Go ahead. And for this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression. So you see this how you overcome him by his blood, by redemption. Under the first testament, they which are called might receive. See, you the can't promise. you can't overcome because guess what? What will you overcome by? By sin and death. So this man had to shed his blood and bring in a new covenant for you to overcome. What did he tell his apostles when he passed him that cup? What did he say? Take drink. This is the new covenant shared for many for what? Go so get what? If your sins were admitted, what are you able to do? You can go to the mercy seat. You couldn't approach to the mercy seat before. You know what I'm talking about? You couldn't do that. Man, don't you understand, son? Don't it say in Jeremiah 31 when he said, I give you a new covenant? What he said he'll do? Your sins, I will what? He said, and I will blot out your transgressions like a what? So if we don't have that, your sin still with you. And if your sin still with you, that means when the beast come, you can't beat him. You can't beat him. You know what I'm talking about? Because see, if your sin's gone, guess what that allow you to do? 
be born again. And if you're born again, that means you take on the image of Allahim. And if you take on the image of Allahim, Allahim can't be beaten by anyone. You know what I'm talking about? That's why that's necessary. Start at verse 14 one more time. All right, Muffin Neal. How much more shall the blood of Amashiach who return? Okay, give me a second, Bella. Through the eternal rule, I can offer himself without spot to Allahim. That's right. Purge a conscience from the dead works to serve the living Allah. That's right. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That's right. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. See, see, this is the other thing. We talked about this already. Were you promised an eternal inheritance when you was on Mount Sinai? No, you weren't. This is the promise that you got coming in from Mashiach, though. He promised you an eternal kingdom, did he not? Now, we discussed this one here before. I'm going to see if you remember. When did the new covenant come in effect and when did the old? What can you go in the text and point to to say this is when this covenant started? What is a covenant, by the way? It's an agreement. It's a contract. How many of y'all have entered into a contract before in your life? Is a contract enforced when all terms are completed or is it enforced until all terms are completed? As soon as it is agreed to. As soon as it starts, it's in, a, it's in effect. All terms don't have to be completed. Because, see, you can't beat with Yahuwah unless you enter into what? A covenant with him. See, guess what? We can't enter into the covenant our forefathers made in Egypt. You know why? Because they broke it. Once that contract was broken, you can't enter in. You, we can no longer enter into that. That's been broken. When did they break it? When they served that other God. The when they did that golden calf, they broke it right then. They broke it right then. You ain't even got in the land yet, and it was broke. You know what I'm talking about? How do we know that? Because what did Moses do when he came down from the mount? He did what? He threw it down and broke it. And why did he throw it? And why did he break it? Because of sin. So it was already broke. You hadn't even received the land yet. You had done broke it. That means he had mercy to allow you to continue because by terms of the agreement, he could have terminated it right then. Soon as he came down from that mount and caught them down there singing and playing and eating, he could have killed them all because the covenant has been broken. I can terminate the agreement. You know what I'm saying? But see, we don't look at it that way. Because guess what they did? What sin did they commit besides idolatry? Adultery. You cheated on your husband. You cheated on your husband. See, we don't want to look at it like that, but that's what you've done. Only for adultery. Yeah. Death. That's so that means man can go get him another wife. But guess what he didn't do? The same thing Adam didn't do. The same thing is saying in 2 Samuel 14. He still want to have a generation that can't be numbered for the stars of heaven like he promised to Abraham. So he spared it. So do y'all remember when was the first covenant brought into effect? When he sprinkled the blood. When he sprinkled the blood in Exodus 24. And uh, what did the people stand up and say? Everything that you said, we're going to do it. Covenant was in effect right then. Covenant didn't go into effect in Exodus 20. It went in 24. Because what did they need to bring that covenant into effect? Blood. You know what I'm saying? We need blood. So then when machine come back on the back end, did you get an eternal inheritance yet? No. But you got two things out of that agreement. And what were those two things? Now, you ain't got that yet. You got two things immediately when the new covenant went in effect, a part of that agreement. And what were those two things that you got immediately? You got forgiveness of sins and the Ruach HaKadosh. You got access to that immediately. You know what I'm talking about? Because those are parts of the agreement. Mm -hmm. He said, I put my laws into your heart. And that's the Ruach. We already know that. You got that immediately. I say necessarily immediately, but you got it 40 days after. And then you got remission of sins the minute he died. You got the Ruach the minute he rose and then ascended. You got parts of those agreements off top. Now you waiting on the last part of the agreement. How do we know this here? When Abraham entered into a covenant with Yahuwah, right? Did he promise him a land? Did he ever receive it? So I guess that means that covenant ain't in effect either because Abraham never received that. He said that Abraham would have a seed that would outnumber the stars of heaven. Did he ever see that? Matter of fact, we discussed this here. Did Isaac ever dwell in the land? 
as not a stranger? No. Did Jacob ever dwell in the land as not a stranger? No. So they never seen that. Matter of fact, get that Hebrews 11, man. Give me Hebrews 11. What it is, man? No, 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 that's one. That's, that's, that's too low. That's too low. It's at the back end, uh, probably about 28. Muffinia. No, nah, because you touching stuff. You touching buttons and whatnot. You're messing up stuff. All right now, Muffinia. You're going to fall. <clears throat> Speaking of which, why y'all sat there and watched that baby hit her head on the wall and just look at her? <laughs> I didn't say it wasn't, but ain't nobody go comfort my baby or nothing. <laughs> they don't do right by Muffin Neal. So I ain't that tough. I'm just a girl. A hard-headed girl. That's not for you. Go ahead and pick it up at verse 31. 30. Hebrews 11 and 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with That's them that believed that. not when she had received the spies of peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. Tell of who? Of Gideon mm. and of Barak and of Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and of the prophets. Pause. Every man that you've seen right here, you know what they all had in common? They had faith, and by product, guess what rested upon them? The Ruach. The Ruach. It was no law involved and no story with none of those men that you seen when the Spirit rested on them. What law did you see that, that, uh, that what, we were missing Rahab? What about Gideon? He approached Gideon and told him, I'm going to make you a warrior and a judge. What did Gideon say? I'm the least in my father's house. He said, don't worry about that. Ain't that what he told him? Did not the Ruach of Yahuwah rest upon him? Because Gideon did what? He trusted in Yahuwah. Who's the next man you got on here? Now you got Barak. Y'all know who Barak is, right? Oh, you don't know who Barak is? Ah, oh, you slacking on your Mac and you better help him out, Glory. What about Doris? Y'all know who Barak is? I'm offended of great regard. Who can tell me who Barak is? And you bet not say Obama. <laughs> you want to judge him? Yeah. He is in Judges chapter 5. That's the one who went to fight the war when Deborah was prophesying. You know what I'm saying? You don't read. That's right. You don't read no law with Barack. Barack moved strictly off of faith. That's not to say that these people weren't keeping no law, but we talking about their justification of why they have a memorial. The law has nothing to do with it. They have a memorial because of their faith. Let's look at the next man, Samson. Samson was a what? A Nazarite. From the womb. That means he was chosen to do that and had the spirit put on, never did nothing. He wasn't even born yet. Is that, is that correct? Did not the Malachim step to his parents and say, you're going to have a son, don't drink no wine, don't eat nothing out of vine, because he's going to be a Nazarite from the womb? You know what that you know why they had to step to his parents like that? Because you who already know that their parents was going to obey that instruction because they believed whatever he said was going to happen for their son. See, one thing I know is Yahuwah is not going to ask nobody to do nothing if he already know you ain't going to do it. You know what I'm talking about? Just as a man, men know that. Men don't ask their wives to do certain things because he already know you ain't going to do it. So what's the point of giving you the instruction if I know you ain't going to do it? it? It's pointless. It's absolutely pointless. But see, we don't consider that. Because I just mentioned that because I was thinking about somebody who said, oh, God don't never tell me nothing. Because he know you ain't going to do nothing. That's why. You know what I'm talking about? Because like, you know people like, well, how you hear from God and I don't? Because he know you ain't going to listen. Why would I tell somebody to do something if they ain't going to listen? As I've told you many times before, what he told Isaiah to do, walk around butt booty naked. Ain't too many people going to do that. He told Ezekiel, eat boo-boo. He still ain't doo-doo. It just wasn't man's done. He said, I ain't never done that before. Now, that ain't right. You know that ain't right. See, his issue wasn't the fact of what you told me to do. I know what you told me to do ain't line up with your word. See, that's the difference, right? These men would have did anything he told them to do, but they weren't going to do nothing that didn't line up with his word. Now, hold on now. I know a lot of spirits in the earth now, and I know the spirit of my God wouldn't dare tell me to do this. That's all Peter said. Hold, hold up. I ain't never done nothing like that. I know my God tell me to do a lot of things, but he ain't going to tell me to do that. So I know. I don't know what that means, but I know it don't mean that. You know what I'm saying? 
But see, there's no reason why that's the case. Not because they want to break the law. They love this man so much that they don't want to displease this man. Because the issue is, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I ain't got no problem with that. Most people don't have that type of thought. You know what I'm saying? You ain't invested in that man like that. How many of y'all, we didn't talk about it. How many of y'all would leave your whole family just to, to go to a place and you don't know where you're going and you don't know nobody there? And all you going because you who was said go. And you like this here, bad. Most people be like this here, oh no, I need to pray about it. What you need to pray about? He told you to do it. That's how you know people don't believe in the Lord when they say, I got to pray about that. You pray about what? You think you're going to pray? going to tell you something different? <laughs> Lord, you sure you want me to go around the corner? He like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. You see how I got pissed with Moses? You know what I'm talking about? Man, just go through. Man, I got you, man. I'm slow with tongue. Don't I make the tongue? Don't worry about that. He said, you know what? Because I'm going to kill this nigga if I don't. Here come your brother. I know he speak well. Let him do it because you get on my nerves. I'm trying to take you somewhere you ain't never been before. You know what I'm saying? But see, his was a little different because it was really lack of confidence on how a lot of people got get caught up with. Why would you who would choose me to do that? Why me? I ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying? And I get that part of the equation. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? When you looking at yourself and you thinking I'm so lowly and I'm so this, that, there, and the third, why would he pick me? That's really what about. I'd have met people not even going to do what Moses did, just thinking on dealing with the word, period. They feel like they're unworthy. But I tell them that I tell y'all the same thing I tell anybody. If that type of thought come into your mind, that persuasion don't come from him that call you. That come from the devil. You know what I'm talking about? If you get it in your thought process, you ain't worthy to be saved. You ain't worthy of this. That don't come from you. You who don't sow those type of thoughts in the hearts of men. That come from the devil. You know what I'm talking about? Disregard those thoughts and cast them down immediately. Because that's not what your Lord and Savior told you. Yahushua Shah HaMashiach ain't never told you you was unworthy. He say, if you judge yourself unworthy of salvation and you die, that man say, come and be saved. That's what he told you to do. He said, look upon me and be you saved. Ain't that what the book say? That's what he told you to do. Anything other than that, that don't come from him. That man say, come unto me, you all you that labor. And what he said, he'll give you. Rest. He didn't tell you you ain't worthy of rest. He said, you been working? Come over here with me. He said, my burdens is light. You can put all that stuff down. Don't worry about none of that. Just come over here with me. Any persuasion outside of that, that don't come from him that call you. Don't allow that to enter into your heart. That's the adversary. Cast it down and remove it. You know what I'm talking about? And that's real talk. I ain't trying to be humorous or nothing. Dead serious about that. That don't come from you. Don't let nobody tell you that. Don't let nobody come take. We all know we unworthy of you who because we flesh and blood. That man's spirit. That's the creator of all things. That's common sense. But ain't nobody unworthy of his forgiveness because that forgiveness extends to everybody. That mercy extends to everybody. You're only unworthy of the forgiveness when you don't respect it. Come on, man. Hebrews 11. Hold on. I'm in person. Then you got Jephthah. Y'all know who Jephthah is, right? You don't know who Jeff is, man. This nigga here got the go. That's the man with the daughter. And guess what? He was the one when they said he got put out because his mother was a harlot. He the one that had the daughter. Went to war with the Ammonites, if I'm not mistaken. That's the one who bewailed her virginity with her sister. They run here talking about he killed his daughter. He ain't kill his daughter. People don't understand a burnt offering is an offering of affliction. She had to afflict herself with virginity for all her days. That's why, why, why would he, if he were going to kill her, why she bewailing her virginity? You see how people don't even be paying attention to what they be reading? But of course, y'all know what that bewailing that virginity is about. Praise you. You remember? She don't remember, y'all. You remember what that bewailing her virginity is about? Muffin. I am appalled. All jokes aside, his daughter bewailing her virginity upon the mountains with her friends is symbolic of Mashiach going up and bewailing his virginity about being exceedingly sorrowful under death with his friends. You know what I'm saying? Because he said, hey, man, if you allow me to defeat my enemies, I'll give you the first thing that come out of my house as a burnt offering. And his daughter was the first one to come out the door. And of course, the father gave Yahusha unto us as a burnt offering because he was going because he was going to defeat our enemy, which is death. You know what I'm talking about? So he offered up his son. You know what I'm saying? From the foundation. 
it was already set. It was already set. See, the only reason why we always focus on all of these things all the time is for you to understand how much love this man has and so that you would reciprocate it and that your hope and trust would be in Allahim always. <laughs> So when you face with any type of tribulation, any type of persecution, any type of sadness, any type of anything in life, that you would hold fast to the strength of Yahuwah, because you would understand, if a man loved me that much to where when I was contrary to him and he was walking contrary to me, that he went contrary to himself and became that which he is not, which is sin, in order to redeem me from a sin that I willfully committed, I will follow and serve this man with every ounce of my soul everywhere he goes. You know what I'm talking about? And no matter what I encounter, if my Elohim can encounter being spit on, slapped, impaled, disrespected, dishonored, then guess what? I can deal with whatever life broke because I have not resisted sin under blood. You know what I'm talking about? And that's real. That, that's the point of it. Because when it comes down to it, what's going to get you through a tough time ain't going to be the law. It's going to be your faith. Your fa the law can't get you through no tribulation. The law can't get what you gonna hit them with. Thou shalt not eat pool. You can't hit them with that in no persecution. That's not gonna allow you to go to jail because you think about a law. That's not gonna allow you to be killed. You're gonna have to have unwavering belief in his promise to be able to endure that. But see, we don't want to talk about that because it makes it seem like so you saying the law less than if that's what you heard, that's because that's what you already believed in your heart. You know what I'm talking about? We all men here, right? We have to say this every time we had a conversation. Men are about order and discipline. So the law is necessary. You got to have order and discipline in your life. You know what I'm saying? That's that. We got to talk about that. But I know when it go down, when it come down to the come down, remember what we talk about in Philippians 4. He say, be anxious for nothing, right? And what did he tell you to think on? Now, near time did he tell you to think on no law? He say, think on that which is good. Think on that which is uh, which is just. Think on that which is pure. That's what he told you to think on. Basically, think on Yahuwah like it said in Isaiah 8 and 13. Let Yahuwah be your fear and let Yahuwah be your dread. Let your mind be on him. That's where your comfort going to come from. The law can't comfort you. The Ruach of Elohim can. Because what did he call his Ruach? The comforter. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to give you comfort. Nevertheless, come on with the Hebrews 11. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought right. righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, mm -hmm. quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of mm -hmm. weakness were made strong. That's right. Wax valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. That's right. Women received their dead, raised to life again. That's right. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, That's that right. they might obtain a better resurrection. That's right. And others had trial of mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. That's right. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy. Mm. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. They didn't get what? The promise. They didn't get what? The promise. So because they didn't get it, does that mean those covenants that he made with those men were none of fact? But get what? He promised that Solomon would sit on the throne. David only saw that on his way out the door. You know what I'm talking about? He said all these people went through all these things and they did Jacob receive what he was promised? No. Did Isaac? No. None of these men. What did it say right there though, man? Get him the next verse. Alahim having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Mm. So he provided something better. See, this is the thing, right? The first covenant could not what? Perfect you. The second one can. See, that's why we, I told you I seen a video, dude say 40 reasons why we not in a new covenant. It was them Sakari boys. That joint was trash. It was pure trash. You know what I'm saying? Outright, pure, unadulterated trash. Borderline blasphemous. You know what I'm talking about? And you know why? Because he's saying you limiting the power of Elohim. Because if we not in it, guess what? All are going to hell. Everybody going to hell. Because when this man come back here, guess what you can't be? You can't be no sinner. What did he say he going to do when he catch sinners? He going to kill them. See, you know, I told y'all this before, especially with that wilderness stuff. You know what uh, What brothers like to do? Oh, when Hamashiach get here, he'll straighten it all out. See, I want to live how I want to live and bank on when the Lord get here, he'll correct me. Oh, that's not, that how, that's not how that's going to work. 
Why would he be sending apostles, evangelists, prophets, pastors, and teachers to edify the body for the perfecting of the saints for the, to straighten that out when he get here? Does that make any sense? He doing that now. No, I mean, now let's just be here. We all grown here. Everybody got churned. Everybody grown. Well, almost everybody got churned. Everybody here grown. Now, ask yourself this question. If you own a job, right, you own a corporation, you need to train your employees. You send people to train the employees in the pattern that you want them to be trained in, right? And you say, I'm going to give you a year to get my employees in order so my corporation runs smoothly. And this is when I will return. Do you think you finna spend time teaching these people when I send people there to train you for a whole year? You gonna walk in your company and say, oh, I think, I guess I need to correct your training and correct your training. Oh, absolutely not. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kill all you niggas in here and I'm gonna kill the people who I send to train you because they suck. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get rid of everybody. But if I send the right people to train you and I know they trained you properly and you just didn't follow directions, I'm gonna spare my trainers and I'm gonna get rid of all of you. You know what I'm talking about? That, that, that's the difference what we ain't looking at. This man come back here, he not got time to be training nobody. Y'all already know who the only people he going to be teaching. Those of the nations who weren't killed, who don't know you who are. That's it. And how long they get to get taught for? One day. A.K.A. a thousand years. You ain't got but one day to get it together. You ain't got two days. You ain't got three days. You ain't got four days. You ain't got none of that. You got one day. You going to receive this gospel or I'm a kid. Because my father coming when the day over with, and when he coming, ain't nothing but saints getting in his house. Ain't nothing but saints getting in this house. See, what we're talking about is different here because you, you ain't been. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of Mashiach, two different kingdoms with two different sets of operations. You know what I'm talking about? When you're dealing with the kingdom of heaven, you're dealing with the kingdom of his father. That's an eternal kingdom. That's New Jerusalem coming from above. Ain't no sinners getting in that kingdom. Won't be no law in that kingdom because there'll be no need for the law because there'll be no sinners there. You know what I'm saying? So the only thing that would be there is the tree of life like it would have been in the original garden because that's what he said he going to make New Jerusalem like, like the garden of Eden or the paradise of Elohim. The difference is the kingdom of Mashiach still has a bit of mercy left in it because whether Israelites or of the nations if they weren't sealed with him and, and for whatever reason they get spared alive, they get an opportunity to get the law or the word for Jerusalem that they might actually have an opportunity to get their name still written in the book and get in the kingdom of heaven later. That's why we say they only get one day. Because how long is his kingdom for? A thousand years. And a thousand years is his one day. So a for us, a thousand years is a long time. But when you look at it and scrap how we think and look at it as fourth issue, who is concerned? One day of instruction is enough. You're getting one day to get this together. And if you don't get it together, you can't get in. You know what I'm talking about? And that's just because you see a second resurrection. You see the stuff where it's talking about the sinner going to be 100 years old and die. How the nations, if they don't come up and keep tabernacles. You know what I'm talking about? Because so it's too, because we like, because when we look at it, and I understand how it happened. You thinking they one and the same. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's, it's it's separate. You know what I'm saying? Only reason, what, the main key component of why they separate is since the law still going to be there, that's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because that's all that tree in, in the garden was, was the law. What is the law? The knowledge of good and evil. So the law still going to be there. But when you get to New Jerusalem, remember the book say the law is for sinners. Say the law is not for a righteous man. So everybody that's going to be in the kingdom of heaven, because what is that? That's the dominion of heaven. I mean, this is dominion of the Father himself, and his eyes are too pure to look upon sin. So no one who dwells there can have that on them. Everybody got is going to be just like him. And that's why that come down, but that don't come down until after the thousand years. Because see, Satan ain't even destroyed yet. Then the thousand years and all that. Then everybody go to hell and amen. man. If we be found worthy, we're going to kick it with him forever. You know what I'm talking about? But to get to that point, it has to be a change. And we can't get to that point to this man been gone for a day and a half, if you would. You know what I'm talking about? And then we say, oh, he going to bring that in when he get back. Oh, that was already in effect. Because if it's not in effect, all this preaching we're doing is for nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's for absolutely nothing. 
because that would have been the same. To At the end of the day, all the prophets of, of old, because what do we know? The law and the prophets was till John, then the kingdom of, of heaven is preached. All then were pointing to what he was coming to do, to bring in that better promise that your forefathers didn't get to partake in, that we, by his mercy, get to partake in. You know what I'm talking about? See, we don't look at it like that. See, we ought to be, you know how, bro, I, I want to be in the old days. No, you don't. No, you don't. Be happy you alive now because you get access to something that they didn't. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have access to that. We would have been during the time of Moses. You died, you were done. Now you alive, you receive the gospel, you die, and you still live. You know what I'm talking about? Because whoever live and believe in me will what? Never taste death. Mm -hmm. But you say hallelujah for Yahusha because it's six o'clock. All right. I appreciate y'all time. I bless y'all the house of Elohim in the name of Yahusha. Y'all willing we get this tree of life stuff out, out the way. Hold on. Bella had Jeremiah 10. She mentioned what's up in there. Let me look at that. I almost got it. Of course, you know, that's the uh, the beginning of Jeremiah 10, where people sit back and always like to talk about uh, yeah, the Christmas tree and whatnot. But this is definitely about idolatry, which a lot of that was going on, going on in Egypt. A lot of it, you know what I'm talking about? But nevertheless, uh, we'll be looking at rest and refuge if you who are allowed and also the tree of life. You know what I'm talking about? But just always be thankful for his mercy, man, because we could be out here sideways. Yeah, we did. I'm talking about for next week, bro. If, if the Lord allow, I'm talking about for next week. But, you know, just continue to stand firm on the promises, man. You who will never fail you. You know what I'm talking about? And just keep holding it down and stay faithful. I begin. I bless y'all the house of Elohim in the name of Yahoo. Shout love y'all. Appreciate y'all. You who are willing to the next one. Abigail, you Get that paper off the floor. Praise the Lord indeed, Brother Renner. What's up? Bye.